Boom. My bad. What is up, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, super fam and bro vengers alike? I forgot that my mic was on, was all tripping and all. My, my mic wasn't ready. That's that's my fault. My mic wasn't ready, so I wasn't ready, and I apologize. What is up, super fam and bro vengers alike? I hope everyone is having a fantastic wheelie Wednesday today, because I know that I am fine, totally dandy for surely. Um, for, I hope everybody is ready. Today is the episode two of our From Watcher to Reader series that we have been doing, right? This is, wait, I'm sorry. I fumbled all of that. You know what? I'm going to start over like none of this happened, okay? What is up, super fam and bro vengers alike? I am Sensei Finito, a.k.a. Vane Sensei, and welcome to Marvel Bros, where we discuss all things Marvel and everything pop culture. And today, we are continuing our From Watcher to Readers Season 2 with Episode 1. Last week, we did Episode 0, the prologue, and this week, we are doing Episode 1. And this week, we are covering Chapters 1 through 5 in Book 2 of The Wheel of Time, and that book is titled The Great Hunt by none other than Robert Jordan. I am so excited to get into uh, this. I'm so excited to get into it today. I had a lovely time reading this book. I'm not going to lie to you. It was just, a, it, I think the pacing for it, everything was just really awesome. I had just a fun, a really fun time going into it. And I did this, I was like kind of reading it as I was going along on in like taking my notes and highlighting and things like that. Uh, so, so I'm hoping that I can actually have my thoughts a little bit more concise as we talk about this today. Hopefully, well, we're going to see. You know, I'm no promises though, but that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. I hope you guys are doing amazing today, and I hope you guys enjoyed this reading for chapters one through five of The Great Hunt. Uh, I think this book starts off swimmingly. Uh, I think also when I was doing a little bit of research on these books and stuff, if I'm not mistaken, book one is longer than book two, and then book two is longer than book three. So that was just a, a little interesting note that I wanted to kind of bring up, and I'm really pumped about it. And so far, getting into these chapters, they have been long, though. I think that's kind of why I had to push back uh, today's episode a little bit, because the reading took a little bit longer than I expected it, and that was definitely another thing on my part. But now I have a little bit more understanding of how long the reading is going to be taking week by week, so we can try to stick to that five o'clock time uh more like try to stick to that a little bit more but also i see that there's a lot of people here today too so maybe we'll just kind of keep experimenting with the times and see what's best or maybe six o'clock might be best in between that five and seven o'clock mark or something like that we'll see what's going on but we'll see what's happening and again i hope all of you guys are having a vain tastic day if you guys haven't already make sure you drop a like and a share on the stream because it helps out tremendously around here for everything that we're trying to do you can also follow us on social media at marvel bros to stay up to date with all things marvel and everything pop culture you can also check me out on social media at sensei finito to stay up to date with all my thoughts theories and opinions on whatever particular thing you may be partaking in at that particular time and also check out the weekly podcast wherever you check out your podcast podcast sat if you guys have been on there you guys should know that they've been going up and they've been going in so i hope you guys are checking those out and tuning in with us and staying on uh track and staying on vibe you dig <laughs> but with all that being said man i had a lovely time with this reading you guys know how we do things around here and if you don't know how we do things around here let me tell you we're gonna start off with our chat talk as usual whereas when we just talk to chat a little bit see how you guys are doing then we're gonna get into our overall thoughts of the reading and then we'll go chapter by chapter doing a review and discussion and at the end we'll do a little bit of book to show comparisons of some of the things that you know i saw and some of the things that i liked or uh, versus the the show or whatever uh if this if the section of reading we we're particularly on at that time does have any correlation to the show that was a mouthful pause but i'm excited to get into this today i i know i've said that a couple times but i'm just really i i really enjoyed this reading i always enjoy the wheel of time um and i i don't know if you guys know but we did kind of listen to the michael kramer version uh I, I believe i every time i say michael kramer i just don't think that's the right thing i don't think that's his name for some reason but i get, i think that's his name but I, my brain is like his name ain't michael kramer uh but it's like that's his name but i think <laughs> um but you know we had listened to that for the prologue 
and I'm not gonna lie, I liked it, but it was it's just something about Rosamund Pike and the way that she her rendition of it. So when I did my like when I was going through and reading and listening and whatever, I was do I was I had to go through with the Roseman Pike version just because it was it was different. So, you know, I listen to it and I read it so that way I can kind of con- get all the little knowledge in my brain. Um, and then, like I said, I was I was using it on the computer. So I was able to highlight different things and uh, different moments that I just kind of wanted to hi- uh, talk about here tonight and so on and so forth. So. Just to start it off and get into chat, how are all of you guys doing? I hope everyone's having a, a good one. Uh, this book starts strong, looking forward to a great discussion. Yeah, I could not agree, Mari. I could not agree more, Mari Sue. I do think we we are in for some good talk today. We are in for some good talk. I got my calf. I need some water, but I got my calf. Um, favorite chapter in this section. Oh, yeah, I can put that out there. Let me, uh, uh, I don't even know how to, I, I, I keep seeing this Q and A thing, uh, and I don't know what it is, so I'm going to try this out. questions <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna work but I just really want to see how it is I think it the thing that I don't like is I'm pretty sure it makes my chat disappear which is a such a weird like I don't know like now I don't have chat like I, I can't do the Q&A and chat at the same time that's so frustrating to me like it really frustrates the hell out of me that that's not like that for some reason um okay i have to cancel the q a thing end q a confirm yeah that shit's weird i don't know i don't know what's going on <coughs> i need you to youtube i need you guys to get on it with your uh interactive stuff when it comes to the polls and all this stuff I don't think I have enough slots to ask what was your favorite chapter, but I want to know. Let me know uh, in the comment section what was your favorite chapter one through five in this first segment of reading. Uh, we, I think I just read that favorite chapter in this section. It might be one of. I think you're the rest of your message is weird. I'm torn because I love a rare Moy Rain POV, but I also love Land spending quality time with Rand. I agree with both of those things. I'm not gonna lie to you. I agree with both of those. Yo, what's up, Thatcher? Hello there. Uh, just popping in to say hi again. I'll be listening at work tomorrow, and I'll throw my thoughts in the comments. I did reread this section for this one. Awesome. Well, re-listen. I love the audiobooks. Yeah, yeah. I don't under. I don't know what to say either. What's the proper terminology for reading a book with when you're listening to the book? Like just say, saying you're listening to a book, it just doesn't roll off the tongue the right way. Saying I'm reading a book, it just works. You know what I mean? It just works. So that that's kind of what I like. Even because some. Sometimes I do read and sometimes I'm listening, but either way, I feel like I'm reading. So I'm always going to say reading. That's just how it is. Like, like I read an audio book that like, that's just what it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that bothers your brains, but it doesn't bother mine. Uh, yo, that, Hey, Thatcher's a uh, storm did a number on my roof. Could use some expertise. Oh no. Your roof got black. That's not good. Mari. So I hope, I hope everything is going good with your house though. Um, Thatcher is no sin buoy. What? I'm a sucker for sword forms. Yeah, I loved the sword form thing. Uh, I think I even made a note that I was like, yo, these are the sword forms everyone's been kind of talking about or something like that. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, parting the silk is my favorite. Ooh, Marisu after dark. Yeah, it's always Marisu after dark. Honestly, there is no Marisu not after dark. <laughs> Just to be honest. Welcome all the hunt begins the hunt begins indeed and I am excited to get into this hunt 
facts. Get the popcorn ready. And if you ain't got no popcorn to get ready, well, definitely check out Dom's Bombs Gourmet Popcorn. You can check it out right now. Go to the website, www, and then you know the rest. If you don't know the rest, I'm pretty sure it says it right there. Or you can check her out on Instagram, all the other social media sites and whatnot, and get you some Dom's Bomb Gourmet Popcorn, where the popcorn is always bomb gourmet and of course is made by dom so definitely check that out check that out check that out i'll fix that with the timestamp. i appreciate you so much kp my i don't i don't know what was going on <laughs> i don't know i think i might have had a slight stroke i'm not sure uh chapters tend to be around 20 pages for most of the series mm, okay okay i dig that Except for prologues, which can be over a hundred, literally. I feel like this prologue, th and that was another thing is like I read the prologue again because I told you guys last week like I definitely wasn't able to consume it the way that I wanted to at first, so I had to go back and reread the prologue so I could get a better understanding of what was going on because I definitely just felt like I was missing out on something. You know, I didn't know what it was, but I was missing out on something. And when going back and rereading it, it was it was awesome. I'm not going to lie to you. It was really amazing. I assume most of us are old school readers who are used to waiting. I feel that. I'm not as old school as I could be. I only started in 2005 with book 10. Still had seven, at least seven years of waiting. <laughs> I feel that, yo. I feel that. You guys definitely be waiting for y'all books. Super dedicated fan base. It's hilarious that it took the books a long time to like kind of come out. And then it's also kind of been taking a long time for the seasons of the shows to come out for one reason or another. Uh, it's just kind of everything's been proper. <laughs> proper for what's going on there. You feel me? Um, but yo, I had a good day today so far. It was just, you know, kind of more of a chill day. I've been doing a lot of stuff lately. So this today was a little bit more of a... Of a chill day, kind of, but not really, to be honest. I was still working and doing things, but, you know, it wasn't just go, 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 go. And then I was doing the reading and doing stuff like that. So I kind of got to relax and chill out. And that was really nice to be able to really dive into the book uh, and nerd out for a couple of hours. That was dope. Uh, you know, just it's, it's been a good day for me. It's been a it's been a decent day. It's been a it's been a day. <laughs> and I hope it's been a decent, good, solid, fantastic day for you guys as well. Um, we're going to get into the reading. We're going to be talking about it. I, I really enjoyed everything that this book has to offer, which I knew I would. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's just uh, give me a little second and then we're going to get into the uh review and the review portion basically or my my initial thoughts my excuse me my opening thoughts or overall thoughts of this segment of the reading chapters one through five uh let me get a one in the chat if you guys actually reread this section uh and a two in the chat if you didn't it's okay if you didn't i just kind of want to get a little bit of a tester or a little bit of a temp check to see how many of you guys may have reread it in order to kind of be on the on the hype and and on the replay as well if you guys are watching let me know if you guys have reread this portion as well uh in order to kind of go along with the um book club that we're doing Honestly, I recommend reading yourself the first time through and using audiobooks for the second pass. It's just too easy to zone out listening to the audiobook. I, I feel that for sure. I, I can feel that. Um, I, I'm not a zone outer, really. So I understand what you're saying, though. I, I kind of zone in, in a way. <laughs> like if I'm listening to something, it, it, it kind of locks me in. But, you know, I think, I think having that kind of attention not an attention span but have everybody has different attention spans basically <clears throat> and what i mean by that is even when reading a book you know i lose my place reading a book and might have to reread a portion or something like that and i find myself doing the same thing even with an audiobook right like either way i kind of find myself doing the same thing so uh that just kind of that that's just how it ends up working out for me at least so 
I, 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 like I said, though, I like both. I like reading and I like doing the audio book. I even like doing them both together, uh, one at a time, either way. Sometimes I'll have the book open. Uh, you know, I'll have a book open on my computer while I'm working and then listening to the book and then have the page on the right as well. And then I'm like doing something and I'm like looking at it while I'm scrolling. Like, but I, I guess I multitask all day kind of, so it's different for me, I suppose. But what kind of way do you guys, do you guys even listen to audio books? Do you not listen to audio books? What's your favorite way to listen to them? Do you listen to them on sped up, revved up? Uh, cause I know some people will listen to it on like 1.5, almost on two speed. I tried that and it just kind of completely breaks my immersion. It like when it's like, like when it's like that, I just can't even, I can't focus. I need the same tone pitch, you know? Um, yeah, I, I need the same tone pitch for sure. <coughs> uh, start a poll. Okay, let's get it cracking. Let's get it percolating, bokeh moaning. My bad, I was looking for my little script thing. Bam. And let's put this up here. Oops. Bam. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That works for your brother right there. Okay, so that is chat talk. That will end our chat talk par portion. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, X-Men 97 was fire last night. Not going to lie to you. If you watched it, let me know. Um, uh, Fallout is coming out tomorrow on Prime Video, but they're doing the entire season. So I'll probably watch that and talk about it uh, probably on like TikTok or something. Maybe not do anything on YouTube for that. <clears throat> I, I unfortunately have not finished the infamous season of in this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This new season of infamous. And I might do that tomorrow, possibly. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm, I might do that tomorrow. But again, I know the the new season of Fallout is dropping. And I, I, I might just go live for that and watch two episodes. I'm not sure. But, you know, as far as it goes with our watch parties, I think that's those. I, I think there's something else coming out soon. Uh, as far as movies that are coming out in theaters, Civil War is coming out this week, and apparently that movie is about, like, what if the Civil War happened right now, I suppose? And uh, I might go see that on uh, on Friday, um, possibly. If you guys have seen any movies or if you guys are watching any shows on right now on television, definitely let me know what those shows and or movies are. Um, and if you think I should do a watch party for anything new that's coming out, let me know that too in the comment section down below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I appreciate you guys all for being here with me. And now it is about to be time to get into uh, my overall thoughts. Uh, but just a little quick thing before we do, go ahead and check out GTLG and get back to me and let me know what you think. Six nations divided, how the gods envisioned the lands of Gephora, where nations must praise their gods individually. Inguvu, the god of power, Altira, the goddess of reality, Akasha, the goddess of space, Akaili, the goddess of mind, Nafasi, the god of time, Isarin, the god of soul. Each god bestowed their name and universal property to their nation through the blood of their land. Diligent praise to these gods, along with the blood of the land, allows the inhabitants of Gephora to wield the universal property of their god. These inhabitants are called gifts. It is forbidden for these nations to fraternize with one another. Gifts, the lands of Gephora. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you check out Gifts and Lands of Gephora, which is a story that I am working on. 
uh, currently, uh, I am accepting alpha readers. You can check that out. Uh, Gifts of the Land of Zephora has its own YouTube channel. We have a Discord. We have applications for alpha readers if you want to become one. Uh, you can go ahead and check out the Discord. All that good stuff. All the links will be somewhere for y'all to check out. Okay. Man, overall thoughts. I really appreciated this portion of reading, you guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Going into it, I was a little bit... Uh, I don't want to say concerned, but I was very, my had my interests were super peaked going into this portion of the reading for multiple reasons. And one of the main reasons being that I was really interested in knowing how we were going to continue on from what we finished with uh, from the last book. Um, I'm going to try to leave my book to show comparisons for the end of this from Watchers to E-Reader episode. Uh, so just I'll, I'll let that be known, but I will probably say certain things about it uh, here and there. But I'll look I'll leave it again. I'll, like I said, uh, for the very end. Um, I think the flow of these chapters from chapter one through chapter five went really well. I appreciated being able to see all of these different characters in a different ways. Uh, also. I mean, we obviously get kind of Rand's POV as like the main character POV in the book a little bit, but we still got to experience a lot of other uh, POVs in this short segment of the chapter and I, I uh, section of the reading, I meant to say. And with that, it, it allowed me to kind of experience all of these characters um, through Rand's eyes, but then also be able to know from book one that they're not really thinking that, but they are thinking something is up, you know? Like, I think it was really awesome to be able to have that uh, co correspondence kind of be lost in translation and see Rand be kind of on the <laughs> on the brink of losing his mind, but also he is very right for, with a lot of the concerns he has, right? Like, on one hand, he's being super paranoid, but on the other hand, he is completely... Uh, right for being paranoid so all of those vibes kind of just mixed in together it really was a fun it was a fun read it was a fun time to be able to experience that and kind of go through it and see um what Rand sees from his perspective especially after going through this crazy event I think it's only been like maybe a month since that thing happened as well because I know in there it said something about almost a month that he's been here or something like that so I know there's a a, a small mention of time frame uh and I and again I just appreciate the way that everything is framed in this section of the reading we're not getting we're not getting handheld at all. Like our hands are not being held by any means necessary. <laughs> like they are kind of just throwing us right back into the fray as they should, in my opinion, uh, because it's like, if you're here, you know what it is. We don't need a complete recap of everything. Of course, characters will mention things that have happened here and there sporadically, but we don't need a uh, you know, you know, after all of this happened, this is where we are now. And it's been so long in the form of dialogue. It, it's not really going to happen. You're just going to have to kind of remember a lot of things on your own. And it's going to throw so many other things at you at the same time. And that was what I had a really fun time with. I love juggling all these new uh, ideas and all these new just names and everything. I love juggling them and trying to figure out how everything fits together because there's definitely a puzzle that we're looking to solve for for a lack of better words we're looking to solve a puzzle right alongside everyone else and there's so many puzzles going on and in this section of reading and only five chapters we were introduced to a lot more than five new puzzles you know in the form of what's going on with kind of everyone <laughs> uh you know even in the city that they're in it's obvious that there's something going on to me there's something going on like with the people there yes and also rereading that uh epilogue or or the prologue excuse me it, it really opened my mind even more to kind of going into the minute details of who these people are that we're even meeting in this city now i'm like looking at people i'm like okay who is this like who is this <laughs> like wait what are they wearing <laughs> what do their fingernails look like <laughs> like i'm trying to figure out uh, if any of these people were at the dark uh you know at the dark gathering or the dark friends gathering you know i'm trying to figure out what is happening and where it's happening at um and, you know, again, I was really surprised with book one, how we saw literally 
two to three Aes Sedai in the entire and the entirety of that book. It was awesome, don't get me wrong, but I was just surprised that we didn't see a lot more. And then in this book, immediately we see a gang of Aes Sedai pulling up, and they are pulling up to be ready for whatever is about to happen. They are they're there for a reason. They are not there to just be chilling. No, none of them are. And that was another awesome thing to just kind of see and see how they roll out and see how again this city kind of reacts to that and how people just the normal day-to-day -day normies are just watching Aes Sedai pull up and how they feel about it and we are able to experience that through Rand so I it's just the reading does such a good job where the right the writing is weaved it's literally weaved together in such a good way that everything just kind of ends up blending to uh and in, into an end and I just really appreciated this section because it got me straight into all the things that I wanted. It allowed me to ask certain questions that I also had, and it raised certain questions that I didn't know I had, but then it was like, oh, yeah, what the hell was that? You know, it's just, man, it was so pleasant going through this reading, man. I'm not going to lie, you guys. So I think that's a good place to say those are my overall thoughts before we get into the chapter-by-chapter -chapter review and discussion. Um, Yeah. I, I believe that's a good place to say those are my overall thoughts. So I'm going to jump back into chat now and see how what your guys' overall thoughts are up until this point. Have you mesmerized the first paragraph yet? The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. I just, I love that. I'm not going to lie to you. I love that. That was, that was just so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, and I believe, isn't that what Moiraine says in the trailer for the show? Um, if I'm not mistaken, the great thing about book two is that I've always thought this book, uh, this is the book where Jordan flexed his story away from, whoa. Okay. The great thing about book two is that I've always thought this is the book where Jordan, uh, Flex his story away from and evolves the genre. And you can already see that in the first five chapters. Oh, 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 away. Oh, the, okay. Jordan gets away from Tolkien. Okay. I understand. Yes, yes, yes. I agree completely with that, with that statement. Um, I, I agree. And and the first book, it did feel a little bit more. I, I don't even think it felt too Tolkien-y, but I, I, I do understand where you're, what you're saying from that point of view of now he's getting his own wings. Like he is now spreading his wings. You can, you can see he's way more comfortable. You can see he got his weight up and he's like, yeah, I know what weight class I'm in. I know what I'm doing. Now I just have to train and go hard. And then he trained, he went hard and now we are be able to kind of reap the benefits of his ethic that he kind of put into it. And I love that Rand is close to losing it here. He is super close to losing it. Rand has been like, on the edge <laughs> he's been on edge about everything and that's something that i kind of want to talk about as well more once we get into the reading but uh he he is so on edge and i love seeing him on edge i can't lie to you i like to see him being a little bit more not i don't i guess timid isn't the way to put it but he is just like man maybe i should not be do like man i need to get away from everybody like i need to protect myself this person can't be trusted or whatever the case may be he's definitely just set tripping <laughs> it has canonically been a month okay i thought so okay okay I thought so. If you if you love juggling names, boy, this is the series for you. Oh yeah, and I definitely felt that. Like once we get to like what is it, chapter four, and there's like a Leanne and then Leandrin. I was like, oh wait, 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 wait. I found myself sometimes thinking that Leanne was the other one, and, then, and I was like, wait, 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 no, that's not right. She's not her. That's not that person. This person is that person. Uh, so I, you know, this is what's going on there. I, yeah, so that was awesome. I mean, the head of the Aes Sedai just traveled hundreds of miles to meet you. He should be scared. Facts. Yeah, he's super scared. I, I feel that. Uh, all he knows about when Aes Sedai travel in numbers is about capturing men who channel distilled him. And he was not having it. He was about to be he's like, bro, I am not about to be here. I want to gush a long time over Lan and Rand's bromance time. That's hilarious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um uh that yeah that's hilarious uh 
I, I appreciated that too. And I, I have some stuff there to talk about, but I'm going to start. All right, let's get into it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the epilogue, but I do want to point out a couple things. I did not notice that it, that, uh, in the reading before we were talking about like what type of clothes bro was wearing. I didn't notice that at all. Uh, I, I remember I was telling you guys that I didn't know what was kind of going on. And yeah, I I had no idea how much I didn't know what was going on until I went back and did the rereading. I was like, wait, he's disguising his height and he's disguising whether he's like his size too. Like bro went in a full master of disguise vibe. Like I really didn't realize it was that in depth, you know? So I was like, like when I went back to it, I was like, okay, Boars is, or the man who called himself Boars is going all out to do it. And then, um, I, uh, I also appreciated how it was like the servants. I, I'm telling you, I didn't really get anything from last week, but uh, I, I appreciated how the servants hear everything point of view and the servant girl was like there. And then he saw that she, they had dull eyes and da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden they were just gone. And then he was like, man, this is, this is super creepy. Like, um, I'm every time I try to search for a weakness, it seems that they have fixed it. Like that's, I just love that. I love that. And then I didn't notice that there was also a tinkerer there. I was like, yo, what is the tinkerer doing here? I had no, I didn't even know a tinkerer was a dark at the dark friend party wearing a, a green pants and a yellow shirt. I was like, bro, like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love that. I love that, that little aspect. Um, and then there was a note to say, there was a note of this, uh, I said, die there was on her right hand was a gold ring, right? We're talking about the gold ring. And I automatically was like, Oh, it's an Aes Sedai. But it pay, it makes a note to say an Aes Sedai, or at least a woman trained in Tarvalon by Aes Sedai. So, uh, what does that even mean? Um, are, are there people that aren't Aes Sedai that are trained by Aes Sedai that are still able to wear the ring of an Aes Sedai? Like, how does that work out? I probably need to waffle, but that definitely had me like, hmm. I was like, what's going on here? Um. Oh. Oh, and then I just really loved the maggot and the grave, the eyeless egg thing. That was awesome. Uh, I, I really appreciated. How, I just appreciate the level of detail that... Um, <coughs> uh, Robert Jordan goes to to be to explain certain things. It's just magnificent. And then uh, I didn't really notice either that. Uh, I didn't even really notice either that Boars was kind of going through a tug of war of how he felt when he was like bound in Sheol Ghul, bound by the Creator at the moment of creation. No, I serve a different master now. The hand of the creator shelters us all and the light protects us from the shadow. No, no, I, a different master. Like I, <laughs> I love that. I love the, uh, uh, inner turmoil that he's going through, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to make the best decision that he can or make his best decision that he wants to make. But it's also obviously in direct conflict with who he is as a person and what he believes in, in his life. It's like, man, what are we doing? And this is like three, ch this is like, like what five pages in that this is happening i'm like oh yeah we're definitely about to be cooking um oh and then we see uh the blood red oh, the blood red robe pulling up uh Oh, and then we also had this this little note that I had to bring up as well. The Vers the Forsaken, 13 of the most powerful wielders of the one po power in an age filled with powerful wielders had been sealed up in Shio Ghul along with the Dark One, sealed away from the world of men by the dragon and the hundred companions and the back blast of that ceiling had tainted the male half of the true source i cannot tell you enough how good it is that this is being reiterated for me because i don't think i've really actually took in the scale of this of what was of the wow of the male half of the source being tainted i didn't understand like i thought that was just from the ceiling of uh 
the dark one. I didn't know that it was the entire event of that happening is what caused the source to be tainted. Like, I... I, I think I'm just blending events together because in my head, I th I thought everything was one thing, but it's not one thing. <laughs> like, I thought the breaking of the world is what caused the thing that happened. But there's multiple events that happened at once, and that's one thing that I really didn't understand. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I didn't – yeah, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. So – yeah, I'm here. For, I'm here for it. I love that we got that better understanding of what was going on, and now I have a better understanding of what's what what the is going on within this world. And it was rephrased in a way that gave me the other half that I didn't know, and I'm not sure if I purposely didn't know that because of the way you know what I mean. Like it was almost like other people were telling him after book one that they didn't understand the thing that I just said. And then he was like, oh, okay, I'll just put it in there in the prologue. So everybody can get that once before we even get into this next book, because it's like, bro, like it, it, it's just phrased the exact way that I needed it to be phrased for me to understand what was going on with the forsaken uh, and, and what's going on with the dark one. Like all of that, I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't understand the whole thing, but now I do. Now I have a better understanding of the whole thing, I should say. Uh, oh, yeah, and then we see the Trolloc Tongue, Heart of the Dark. Uh, the Great Lord of the Dark was the Trolloc name. And uh, let me see, let me see. Oh, and then we get the three things uh, that the that Balsamon tells the man who calls himself Bors. Uh, firstly, you are to return to Terabon and continue your good works. In fact, I command you to redouble your efforts. Secondly, you will watch for the three young men and have your followers watch. Be warned, they are dangerous. And have your followers watch. That's something that I definitely missed the first time. Thirdly, regarding those who have landed at Toman Head and the Damani, of though of this you will speak to no one when you return to Terabon. And then, you know what I mean? We don't get to hear what actually happens right there. And it's just, ah, man. Oh, oh, I don't know. Oh, and then we get this part right here. Then I, And I want to read this part as well. Uh... Is there a way to no abruptly he felt his head grasped as though by a giant hand crushing his temples felt himself being lifted and the world blew apart in a thousand starbursts each flash of light became uh, becoming an image that fled across his mind or spun and dwindled into the distance before he could more before he could more than barely grasp it an impossible sky of straight of striated <laughs> clouds red and yellow black and black racing as if driven by the mightiest wind the world had ever seen a woman a girl dressed in white receded into blackness and vanished as soon as she appeared a raven stared him in the eye knowing him and was gone an armored man in a brutal helm, shaped and painted and gilded like some monstrous poisonous insect, raised a sword and plunged to one side, beyond his view. A horn, curled and golden, came hurtling out of the far distance. One piercing note, it sounded as if it flashed toward him, tugging his soul. At the last instant, it flashed into a blinding, golden ring of light that passed him that passed through him chilling him beyond death a wolf leaped from the shadows of lost sight and ripped out his throat he could not scream the torrent went on drowning him burying him he could barely remember who he was or what he was the skies rained fire and the moon and stars fell rivers ran in blood and the dead walked the earth split open and fountained molten rock excuse me like like excuse me bro what 
Like, we are so cooking. It's it, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how much we're cooking. It's ridiculous how much we're cooking at this point. The blacksmith, the swordsman, and the trickster. And uh, the, the man who called himself Boars was awfully perturbed by Perrin's yellow eyes. And that's something that definitely stood out to me. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. And then we end the chapter with saying there's work to be done in Terrabon and on Almuth Plain. So there is that. And that is how we end the prologue. And we're just going to go straight in to chapter one of uh, the Wheel of Time turns and ages. Wait, 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 wait. So now, let's get into Chapter One The Flame of Tarvalon. <laughs> the wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend, then fade to myth, and are long forgot when that age comes again. In one age, called the Third Age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past, a wind rose in the mountains of doom. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time. But it was a beginning. Born among black, knife-edged peaks where death ro Yo, like, but it was a beginning just a beautiful way to start this book what a beautiful way to start this book man i cannot i cannot stress it more just a wonderful way to start the chapter um so we pull up on rand althor stripped to the waist mind you uh um mad wild and we see the hot sun beating off of his sweaty, chiseled, muscly body. Like, I didn't know what was going on at first. I was like, yo, <laughs> what, what, what was going on? But, uh, you know, hey, we're, we're here for it. And then, oh, maybe the, maybe the, am I tripping? Oh, yeah. And I love the way that we, we have this notion here. Rand formed a single flame in his mind and concentrated on it, tried to feed all emotion and passion into it to form a void within himself with even uh, with even thought outside. Like, whoo, that is a fire way to picture that and to embody that like. That is a, such a, a solid way to express anything. I mean, I think you hear uh, even people in sports say they do something like that, you know, to clear their mind or anything. It just shows uh, the level of training that our guy Lan is giving Rand for real, for real. Like it, it, it's not a it's not a game, and he's been getting whooped up by that by the training sword as well which i love to see he's, he's losing he's not i mean he's training but he you know he's getting whooped still uh and i appreciate that a lot of the time i mean it's a good way to to skip a training montage but let us know that they've been training at the same time you know <laughs> it's almost like a two for one there where we don't have to worry about it and i love that um I was like, am I tripping or did the wind really push him? Because I, even I, when I was reading, I was like, yo, he got attacked by the wind, homie. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. But Lan is just like, hey, strange things can happen this close to the blight. So that was interesting as well. Um, that, was, that was definitely interesting as well. And... Uh, you know, we get to see them basically just chit chat back and forth. Like they're talking about what's going on. Uh, you 
you know, <laughs> and my man says, you know, you're for someone like you, bro. This isn't this isn't awkward. And then we get to see I love the way that they finally get I think this is the first time we really get a solid explanation of the sword, in my opinion, you know, leather wrapped hilt inset with a bronze heron. Another bronze heron stood on the scabbard or the scabbard, uh, and yet another was scribed on the sheathed blade. Like, that is a lot of detail that I don't know if we knew. Like, I don't know if I knew there was three herons on, in the entirety of the blade, you know, I thought it was just on. What we always see, oh, there's a heron marked blade that everybody sees, and da, 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 da. but no, we get a little bit more um, uh, descriptive notes to it, and uh, I, I love that we also see Rand still going through this thing of Tam is my father, no matter what anybody says, and it's like again. Not one person in the duration of this reading has once said that Tam is not his dad. I don't even under, like, he is the only one that has been trying to perpetuate that idea in any type of way. So, it's just insane that he is constantly kind of telling himself it, that in that way, it's not even like he's just reassuring himself, he's literally just saying it you know he, he's just like it's like and then i it also says it he wished his own thoughts did not sound as he was if he was trying to convince himself but he is trying to convince himself because not one person has said it to him yet so it's crazy that it's just so deep in his mind and i think it goes to show us uh how far i don't know if how far gone is a is a proper way to say it but how far gone he truly is at this moment because he can't get his mind off of that particular thing and it's kind of crazy that it's that deep for him um but here here comes lan being bro the big bro that he is in the borderland sheep herder if a man has the raising of a child that child is his and none can say different i love that i love that that's so beautiful it's 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 something that i feel again no we didn't get to see this type of relationship established between rand and lan within the show at all uh it, at this point we are in completely different territory as 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 far as the vibe goes of what we're getting from each character and the relationship that has been established between these characters. Uh, and it's just kind of, yet again, a beautiful sight. And, you know, we get Lan just kind of having that heart to heart. Like, yo, if the blade is carrying, is that is weighing that heavy on you, then sell it. Uh, and then he's like, no, nah, he's like, yeah, this is a, Rand is like, yo, this is a rare blade, but I thought any hair, heron marked blade was rare. And then we get the, we get yet another beautiful explanation of Tam didn't tell you then he must know. Perhaps he didn't believe many do not. Um, and, and then he pulls out a blade that is almost the twin of Rand's. Like, I love that description. Like we are getting so much description in the min most minimum amount of words. That's one thing that I'll say. We are not having a well at this point right now, but you know we're not. We're using the most minimal amount of words to explain what's happening here. He pulls out a blade, almost the twin of his, just without the heron. You know, so we all the description, the description that we have got for, about the heron mark blade. We now also have for Lance blade. It, it, yes, give me more. Um. Here we go. And then this is where we find out it was the sword of the kings of Malkir. Lan did not speak of it. He did not even like others to speak of it. But Alan Mandra Mandragon was the lord of the seven towers, lord of the lakes, and uncrowned king of Malkir. The seven towers were broken and the thousand lakes the layer and the thousand lakes the layer of unclean things. Malkir lay swallowed by the great blight, and all, and of all the Malkir lords, only one still lived. Like, bro, what? And then we have Lan speaking, and he's like looking at his blade, and he's all, uh, in the war of the shadow, the one power itself. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we might need to hear. Uh, I think we might need to hear Moiraine tell us this part because I really, really, um, 
love this part. Here we go. Here we go. Rand did not think Lan would truly seek death while Moraine lived. Turning his blade in the light, Lan spoke. In the War of the Shadow, the One Power itself was used as a weapon, and weapons were made with the One Power. Some weapons used the one power. Things that could destroy an entire city at one blow lay waste to the land for leagues. Just as well those were all lost in the breaking. Just as well no one remembers the making of them. But there were simpler weapons, too, for those who would face Murdral, and worse things the Dreadlords made, blade to blade. With the one power, Aes Sedai drew iron and other metals from the earth, smelted them, formed and wrought them, all with the power. Swords and other weapons, too. Many that survived the breaking of the world were destroyed by men who feared and hated Aes Sedai work, and others have vanished with the years. Few remain, and few men truly know what they are. There have been legends of them, swollen tales of swords that seem to have a power of their own. You've heard the Gleeman's tales. The reality is enough. Blades that will not shatter or break and never lose their edge. I've seen men sharpening them, playing at sharpening, as it were, but only because they could not believe a sword did not need it after use. All they ever did was wear away their oil stones. Those weapons the Aes Sedai made, and there will never be others. When it was done, war and age ended together, with the world shattered, with more dead unburied than there were alive, and those alive fleeing, trying to find some place, any place of safety, with every second woman weeping because she'd never see husband or sons again. When it was done, the Aes Sedai who still lived swore they would never again make a weapon for one man to kill another. Every Aes Sedai swore it, and every woman of them since has kept that oath, even the Red Asha, and they care little what happens to any male. Like, <laughs> like, bro, we're cooking. Like, bro, we're cooking. I love it. I love it. I love the lore that we're getting right here, you guys. Like, being able to find out more about these weapons. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I don't think I even knew that this was a thing. I don't know if the show tells us this. And if it did, I was not paying attention. Because I was not aware that there were weapons imbued by the one power. I had no idea whatsoever. And it is such a fire... That's just amazing. And I love that they have... They're not going to make them anymore. So there's only one more. Like, no wonder why everyone is looking at this blade the way that they do. We're so unaware of just so much. And Lan is just dropping beautiful knowledge on us. And not only that, he's also giving us more information as to who Rand's father is. And who Rand's dad really was. And I don't think Rand is picking up on that notion. He is more so wrapped up in all the other things that it comes with that he's not even paying attention to that fact and I, I i think they i think he needs to like i think he definitely needs to uh you know and then we all we also find out that there's that not all hair and mark blades are made by Aes Sedai, which is another good thing to know and, and yeah bro just they're just freaking <laughs> cooking man they're cooking like, they are just cooking so hard, bro. They're cooking so hard. Um, and then we see yet another heartfelt moment between the two of them where Rand, where now Land is kind of talking to Rand about how he feels uh, uh, about... Um, oh, no. Egwene. Sorry. I kept thinking naive, and I knew it wasn't naive, but Egwene, how he really feels about Egwene and what he really wants from there. And I just, it was, 
it's so awesome to see him ha- 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 see whoa to see Rand have someone there, a male figure in around him again because we obviously know what happened to the last two that he had around him. But seeing Lan kind of pick up that pick up that role in his own way. That I think just you know I think that's what's what's really pleasant. I think that's really what's the best thing to see happen here. Uh, and he's like, "You think she'll give up becoming an Aes Sedai for a life of wandering with you? If you put it to her the right way, she might. Love is an odd thing, and he thinks about Nynaeve as an odd thing as there is. Like." We're cooking. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm loving it, man. We're getting to see all these deeper emotions coming from these characters in the minuscule amount of words. You know, I do feel like the most words from these sections come from descriptive things that are going on rather than the actual dialogue that we're getting from people. Uh, And that's, I think that's awesome, you know, because we're getting so much not just narrative but it just feels right it just feels right <laughs> and they're just rocking together so hard it, it it just it's it's dope man it's dope to see and rand is like no nah, i wouldn't even want her to to leave for me She tells, and then, uh, <clears throat> of course, Rand is, star, is, is mind blown and set tripping off of uh, Moiraine, who is putting him on the back burner because she is always being manipulative. Um, and he's like, yo, she's just not even talking to me. And then he's, and then Land's like, you'd be dead without her. And he's like, but she tells me horrible things about myself. <laughs> like, oh my God, no, poor Rand. <laughs> That I'm going to go mad and die is, is crazy. And then suddenly she won't speak to me at all. And then he's like, I don't even know what I want from her. I, man. And then obviously, Rand, like, Lan's like, well, she's back. You talking all that mess? She's not still gone. She's here. Rand's like, oh, my God, what? She is? And then, <laughs> and then Lan just starts telling him, yo, remember, the Heron form is only for practicing balance. Anywhere but doing forms, it leaves you wide open. You can strike home, you can strike home from it if you wait for the other man to move first, but you'll never avoid his blade. Like, what? Like, bro, what? <laughs> what are we talking? Like, bro, no. Don't just don't don't ignore me and what I'm saying. What's going on with my rain? What's going on with me? What's happening here? Heron waiting in the rushes, sheep herder, and mind your wrists. Like, bro. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I feel like the wind has become its own character so much in this book already. Uh, whenever we talk about the wind or whenever the wind has, is being brought up in the book, it always is either adding to a situation or it is adding emphasis to something else that's going on. Uh, you know, as even when the, like the wind flaps the banner of, of uh, the flame of Tarvalon and everyone is like, like it's boom, we we pay attention to that, you know, a swirl of colors that meant nothing to him, but at the heart of it, a shape like a pure white teardrop. His breath froze in his throat. The heart of Tarvalon. Like, bro, I was like, oh shit, like, oh no, we gotta get out of here. And I believe this is also our first mention of Inktar and other Aes Sedai. So that was, uh, you know, I like I like seeing that. And, and mine's like, why are there so many? The Amberlin seats come in person. Rand's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then that is kind of how we end the first chapter with realizing uh, the Aes Sedai have pulled up, the Amberlin seat has pulled up, and uh, our boy Rand has been training with Land for at least a month now. 
So, yeah, that that that's lit. Oh, oh yeah, and then Lan also tells him, "Better for you if you were a week gone. Like if you like, you're like, bro, get get up out of here." Like, you need to disappear for at least a week so you can kind of, you know, find out what's going on here. And, yeah, okay, so let's talk about uh, the prologue a little bit and chapter one. How are you guys feeling so far? Let me know, let me know. Uh... uh did you... go all right scroll up now that you're reading it's raffo oh yeah that's right it's not waffo anymore that's my bad uh you can pull from show knowledge here Nynaeve gets her serpent ring when she passes her accepted test even though she's not Aes Sedai oh 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 I got you I got you I got you. So people can like go for the tryouts and then get a jersey, basically. <laughs> uh, RJ is good at figuring out what needs to be recapped in clearer language. It, precisely. Wow, you put that really good. Uh, I hope you've been studying the map to keep these straight places straight. Actually, no, I have not been. Especially because I don't have a book for, book for the Great Hunt. So I don't have the maps in the same way. But I'm definitely going to have to uh, uh, look at the map from book one. Uh, and, and, like, see where these names are. I didn't even think about that. That's such a good point. Yeah, I need, like, an interactive map that I can follow as I, like, am reading the book. <laughs> and I can be like, oh, I just read chapter one. And then it puts me where we are. <laughs> Um, I still don't understand how Roseman Pike can be that talented. What about the rest of us humans? Yeah, I agree. She is so good. And that's why I kind of like, I had to, I had to, I had to go back to Roseman Pike. Like it just even not like, again, no, no shame or no hate on, uh, the Kramer version at all, but you know, it's OG for sure. And it sounds OG, you know, the quality of it. You can kind of hear a damn near sounds like a record is playing at low key. So I just, it was just like, bro, I needed it. I needed Roseman Pike. And as soon as I was listening to her voice, I was just once again, just engulfed and wrapped into the the lore and everything. It was just, I was right back in it to win it like Popeye eating spinach. It was awesome. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the quality time was sorely missed in the show. Yes, Marisu. Yes, Marisu. I agree. It, it's kind of wild that we have not seen Rand and Lan kicking it one time. I guess we did see a little bit of them having a conversation, but it was more like, man the hell up and get it together. We got to do this. You know, it was kind of more of that vibe rather than the heart to heart that we started this book with. Like it was literally a heart to heart that we started with here. Oh, okay, but instead they they replaced it with Selena time. I feel that. I think that also is the reason why uh, Show Rand. Um, well, I'll save that for for my book to show comparisons. Uh, but yes, I agree. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no man can say different. God, I love Lan. Uh, Lan is is as hard as they come, but he has a heart. Yes, that's a fact. He is so hardcore, but he is very um, compassionate, for lack of better words. Like he he is concise and compassionate, one hundred percent. 
We should have Sensei come up with a tier list of characters and see how his opinion changes over the course of the books. Oh, I would like that. I might have to. Oh, I like that idea. That's a good idea, brother. Um, let me see. Let me copy that. Copy it and paste. Yeah, that's a, that's a super solid point. I'll, I'll 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 see if there's any tier lists out there because I know they have them on the internet, but I don't. They might have them. They might have. I don't know why they wouldn't. Like Wheel of Time, the Great Hunt character tier list. Yeah, I, I think they should have that. We can maybe even do that as like a side episode of Wheel uh, of or something for Wheelie Wednesday. Remember the three oaths. One of the oaths is stop making weapons. Oh 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 oh. You're right, and I didn't understand what that meant. And I think you guys had told me, oh, yeah, there's weapons made with the one power. And it just kind of went out of my brain because I don't think there was it was ever really mentioned other than in the oath, in the show. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. A tier list would be fun maybe after each book. Ooh, after each book, I could do that. I, that means we would have to do a side episode for book one. Moraine is missing. I wonder where she's been. That's a good point. But I mean, she's Moiraine, so she's always doing something. Carrying water. Whose side is Lan on? Does Moiraine know he's giving Rand so much advice? I don't think he, I don't think she does, honestly. And that's another thing that I, I like to see is that Lan is a little bit He's not like, I don't know if rebellious is the right word, but he's a little bit of his own person, a little more than he was in the show, in my opinion. Oh shit! This oh Fallout came out ten, tonight. I thought it was coming out tomorrow. Well, it'd be like that. Um, yeah, yo, I, I, chapter one was a great way to start the chapter. Like I just, I loved it. I had a good time with it. It, it was a good way to get my whistle wet and to be thrown right back into the fray of everything that's going on. So let me know how you guys felt about chapter one of the wheel of time while we get into chapter two but before we do if you guys are looking to help us out here at marvel bros there are multiple ways that you can and we about to tell you about them right now what is up super fam how's it going everyone welcome to marvel bros where we discuss all things marvel and everything pop culture we started marvel bros back in 2019 because we have a love for not only marvel movies and comics but because we wanted to have a place where people could stay up to date with all pop culture news. Here, you will have access to all of our content, whether it be trailer reaction. He looks like He-Man. Oh! oh! And most importantly, oh! <laughs> controller. Go! Character breakdowns. Welcome to Marvel Bros. Breakdown. Welcome to Marvel Bros. Breakdown, where we dive deeper into characters and theorize about the latest films. Pop culture news updates. On today's pop culture news update. And on today's pop culture news update. On today's pop culture news update. Today's pop culture news update. Or movie reviews. We love to have open discussions here on the channel, so feel free to join us when we go live. Uh, Battle Cove, I like that Kang's motives are understandable. And those same way Thanos' motives were, that's yeah. exactly what we're that saying. That was pretty awesome. Well. Or jump in the comment section of a trailer reaction or breakdowns so we can theorize, converse, and nerd out. Follow us on social media at Marvel Bros to stay up to date with the latest news, rumors, content, and more. You can also join our Discord where we are constantly having conversations pertaining to Marvel, DC, Star Wars, anime, and everything pop culture. All of our past pop culture news updates are available wherever you listen to podcasts at. If you guys would like to support Marvel Bros, all you gotta do is visit our website at www.marvelbros.com buy some merch represent the super fan to get early access to content patron only scoops giveaways private q a's and those sacred watch 
That is right. Check us out. Wherever you want to check us out at. Okay. Now. Good Lord. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it. It's time to get into the next chapter. All right, let's get into chapter two. Welcome. Oh. Chapter two. The welcome. There we go. Uh, I love how I like that we we start a lot of these chapters off with descriptive imagery. I guess, like, to give us a, like, view of where we are, kind of layout, give us a map of the layout, or give us the lay of the land, so we know what's going on, where we are, and that's a, that's always a good, I think that's a, one of Robert Jordan's, like, I don't, I don't know if it's a hidden quality, but for me, it, it's a hidden thing that actually shines really bright, is, the descriptive, uh, the des the description is so good that you kind of overlook it in a way because it paints such a good picture. <laughs> like it does what it's what it's set out to do. It paints a vivid picture of the environment or whatever you know. So it just kind of feels like you're watching things play out in the environment rather than uh, re even reading it. It's like you didn't even read the descriptive. The descriptive part, you know, it, it, it just works so well. And, I, and, and it's lovely. It is lovely. And then, you know, we see him get ha having to strip and get naked and, uh, you know, get, get into some other <laughs> get into some other things, some other types of clothes. Their whole roar, their entire wardrobe gets basically burned to smithereens, and it's like, yo, that's cold. Uh, and we meet Alansu, the shot, the Shatayan, the Shatayan of the keep. So many characters to keep up with, for real. Uh, and then we, this is something that was interesting. Uh, we discovered that the women in this. Like the women and the well, not the women, but the society. This society takes baths and just kind of does things together, and there is no quote unquote sexual innuendo or things that you know notions that are quite to it. It's it's just you know it's just kind of there. Uh, you know it says it says right here he discovered any other woman. Any other time, a woman might as well climb into the water with him, and it could be a scullion or the lady Amalisa, Lord Ag Agalmar's sister herself. Uh, they had soon learned to recognize his blushes for what they were, and not a woman in the keep, but seemed fascinated by them. So they like that. They're like, hold on, hold on. He getting turned on by us being naked? That's kind of cool. Let's see what else we can do to him. <laughs> and they kind of torture him a little bit. Uh, and this was a little, I don't want to say this was like a fuller, cha a filler chapter, but there was just a lot of things going on in this area. Like there was a lot of stuff going on that was kind of just setting up the world, setting up the city that we're in, letting us know about how the town is ran and the town's folk and the people there and all these other things, you know, it, it's all, it's all there. Uh, and they're all there chilling, and they're all there just like just kind of talking about stuff, and learning. He learns new stuff about new people, and he's look, and then he sees all the Aes Sedai and the warders, and they pulling up in the on the horses, and he's in the crowd. You know, like he he's he's just kind of experiencing the things that are going on around him. Uh.
Oh, oh, oh. And then when he finally sees the Aes Sedai and the warders, he's he sees that they all look different. They all are not, they're, none of them are the same. And there's one thing that, there's only one thing about them that was alike. And that was the color shifting cloak he had first seen on land. The cloak that seemed to fade into whatever was behind it, it did not make for easy watching or a still stomach. So any man, so many men in those cloaks. Like, and that's another thing that we kind of miss out on, you know, from the Shizo is, you know, land, land like the cloak, like the, the cloak being dope. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that more, too. <laughs> uh and then we also get this uh, awesome way that we he talks about the um the Aes Sedai, right? We we get the the Aes Sedai to be described to us to a woman they seemed ageless, but from this distance he would have called them all young, but closer he knew they would be like Moiraine, young seeming yet not smooth skinned but with faces too mature for youth eyes too knowing <laughs> what a way to explain the ice to die what a way to say that you know they keep themselves young by using the magic and all this other stuff but you know an ice to die when you see them because of that they look like they're older but they ain't at all <laughs> like yes this is solid man this is solid um i i, I love this i love this it works it works so well, like, and, and, yeah, yeah. Uh... And then we see the warders and the eyes to die. Uh, we, we get introduced to Ronin. The Watcher of the Seals, the Flame of Tarbalon, the Amberlin Seat. <laughs> like fire intro. I love. I, I like that they call her mother. I don't know why, but that's a cool little addition. Um, it did, and then you know he even says it didn't call. It didn't even seem odd with him calling her mother or her calling him son or calling other people daughter or anything. It it, it works. Uh, and then Rand is like scurrying away, trying to get out of there. He's trying to get out of there. He's trying to find somewhere to go. Uh, and then. Someone start he and then we find out that people have been calling him Lord, his, like his Lord and all this. And they he goes to we get explained to us that Rand Althor and Alan Mandragon were close. So for Lan, according to the custom of Malkir, the royal Al named him king, though he never used it himself. For Rand, Al was just part of his name, though he had heard that once, long ago, before the Two Rivers was called the Two Rivers, it had been son of. Some of the servants in Faldara Keep, though, had taken it to mean he was a king too, or at least a prince. So, man, we, we are cooking, like we're cooking, getting all these little uh, little tidbits added here and there. And we see that Rand is trying to, like, escape. And you're like, bro, you can't escape. I'm sorry, bro. Like, it, it can't happen. Where you you have you have to stay here, brother. You can't go anywhere. Um, and then Rand, and then we end the chapter basically with Rand like escaping and trying to get all the way up out of there. And that had me rolling. That he was just like, okay, there's too much going on here. I'm gone. Like, and that's kind of the only things that really stood out to me in chapter two, just because, like I said, chapter two was really, it wasn't long, but it was just like kind of setting up everything that was going on in the city. Uh, and there's not a lot of things that I wanted to spend too much time on talking about uh, in that area. He was just like, yo, on my honor, you know, and, and, and just different things like that. And he's set tripping and he's super paranoid. This is the paranoid uh, one, this is a big paranoid chapter for, I mean, all these five chapters are him being paranoid, but in this chapter, he was highly paranoid for a very, 
like for a long periods of time, like kind of like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on? What's, what's, what's happening? You know? So I like chapter two. It was a good bridge into the next chapter. And uh, it, like, as it was a good view of how the city is reacting to the events that are occurring right now, you know, like that's what this chapter tackled really swimmingly. Uh, I don't know what might have stood out to you guys in this chapter two that I might have overlooked, but let me know in the comments down below because that's basically all the things that I had written down and highlighted here in my book on my end um, for chapter two. So I'm going to go ahead and just move right along so we can keep it going uh, into... Yeah, yeah. So let's get it right along and let's get into chapter three, friends and enemies. And the picture, I believe, is the ruby hilted dagger. Oh, Nelly, oh, Nelly. So we're I think this chapter was like the last chapter we see Rand getting paranoid. This is where the anxiety starts coming into play more. This is where Rand starts being super, super like, oh my God, things are about to go down. I have to be super careful. I got to watch my back. I have to watch everyone. Everyone's looking for me, but they're not looking for me. You know, like I need help. Someone help me. And, and then, and then Rand is like, I just want to go out by myself. That's all. I'll, I'll try one of the gardens then. No rabbits, but at least there's there won't be a crowd. Uh, won't be a crowd. The light illumine you and peace favor you. You know, he's like, yo, I'm, t I'm just trying to get out of here. I'm tr and, and I don't want to rise any attention to anyone. But everybody is looking at Rand like, my guy, you have an entire backpack on and, and, and you're ready to go. Like, you're asking us to let you out and you're sitting here with freaking your bags packed and food for a month like no we're not gonna let you out of here bro like we can't we can't let you leave because it's obvious that you're not gonna come back <laughs> um yeah masima masima's like bro we, we, we see you bro we know what you're doing we're watching you <laughs> i love that i love that um and then he's like i'm not doing anything wrong da, 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 da. and he's looking for a way to get out we see him get uh, climb up onto something, and he's like looking at the rooftops and everything. And this is where we get the first uh, notion of how long it's been. He's like, even after a month, the house has still looked odd to his two rivers' eyes. So that's how we know it's been a month, right? Like as of this time. Um, and oh my gosh. Uh, and then we have we have another nice chapter here. It's like for a moment feeling lost. He leaned against the corridor wall, the stone hard under his shoulder eyes blank. He stared at a distant nothing and, and saw things he did not want to see gentled. Would it be so bad to have it all over? really over he closed his eyes but he could still see himself huddling like a rabbit with nowhere left to run and eyes to die closing around him like ravens they almost always die soon after men who've been gentled they stop wanting to live he remembered tom Mer he remembered tom marilyn's words whoa too well to that to face that with a brisk shake he hurried on down the hall no need to stay in one place until he was found. How long till they find you anyway? You're like a sheep in a pen. How long? He touched the sword hilt at his side. No, not a sheep. Not for Aes Sedai or anybody else. He felt a little foolish, but determined. Like Mans is going through it. His senses are heightened. He is stressing out from left to right. It's like, bro, you have to take a breath. You have to relax. You have to chill out because you are going to give yourself a panic attack if you don't if you don't uh and and, of, and then of course we get to see a little bit more of how the rest of uh the city is working and how everyone is doing um we, you know the smells of spices cooking um we see the children playing in the streets as well uh and and there was a nice little sentence here boys waved wooden swords and girls played with carved dolls announcing that hers was the amaryland seat so we basically see the kids acting out the things that are going on you know like they're playing soldiers or they're playing as warders and then the girls are playing as i said die it's like there is an entire ecosystem of society here and then 
this is something that I thought was very interesting. Uh, Rand, it seems like Rand starts having like spidey senses, basically. It says his skin prickled and he spun on his heel, but there was no one there. The hair on his back of his neck stirred and he whipped around again. Uh, the feel of eyes peering at him around tall piles of split firewood under the long sheds, darting glances over the stacks of seasoned planks and timbers waiting on the other side of the yard for the carpenter's shop now closed tight. He refused to look around, refused to think of how one set of eyes could move from one place so fast, could cross open the yard, could cross the open yard from the firewood shed to the lumber shed without even a flicker of movement. He was sure it was one set of eyes. Like, oh my God, bro. Like, what in the world is going on, man? This is so, it's just like, it's giving such an eerie feeling of man's is trying so hard to save himself. But no matter what he does, no matter where he goes, they're watching him and they are not going to let him escape. Like, they're not going to let him do his own thing like it's just not happening <laughs> um yeah cuz i'm like yo yeah 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 um and then or, and then we see that he finally sees loyal our good our good friend loyal who was watching uh the the men play dice and he's ru and it says right here he's rubbing his chin thoughtfully with a finger thicker than a big man's thumb like what Um, and, and no one was, I love that no one has been tripping off of him at all. And it says, oh, Og gears were not exactly common anywhere, but they were known and accepted. You know, I, I love that. I love that. I, 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 and then we get to see Rand and, and Loyal kind of, uh, just kind of chilling with each other and, and getting around each other and Rand. And then, and then Rand's like, I can remember the first time I ever saw Loyal with his tough, with his tufted ears and his eyebrows that dangled like long mustaches and his nose almost wide as his face saw him and thought he was facing a Trolloc. It still shamed him. Oh, gears and Trollocs, Madral and things from the dark corners of midnight tales, things out of stories and legends. That was how he had thought of them before he left Eamon's field. But now, all the stories are real. Like, oh my god. Yo, all the stories are real. The things that go bump in the night really do. Oh my god. How crazy of a thing to realize or come to, like, come to find out. Like, man. Insane. And then he, then Rand, and then Loyal with his super hearing picks up on Rand saying that, and he's like, "Oh, hey, what's up, man?" And then we find out that they won't let Loyal play dice because he's basically a triple OG, and he's like, and they're like, "Bro, nah, you're not playing with us. You're too good." They just say, "Glory to the builders," and will not bet against me. Like, bro, I love it. I love it. People are like, "Bro, we're not stupid. We're not about to do that." <laughs> We ain't about to do that. Um, and then we we meet up with our good friends Pan, uh, Perrin and Matt yet again, and we, you know Rand relays the message of what's going on with their clothes and and all that good stuff, and and then he tells them what's been going on. And, and then he just starts going off on them. He pulls the thing of. Okay, I need to make my friends hate me and not want to be around me so I can save their lives. And he's like, yo, there are some here that think I'm a lord. A lord. Maybe I like that. Look at you. Dyson with stable hands. When I go, I go by myself. Like, he was mad spicy and just started going off. Yo, he just started going off on everybody. And that was insane. And then... uh yeah, that, that was just crazy how he was just going off on everybody. And I was like, oh, man, that's cold. None of them deserve that. They're good. <laughs> like, none of them deserve that. It's not their fault. <laughs> it's not their fault that you have that, you know, you having a hard time, my guy. 
But alas, there's not a lot of stuff to go on. You know. But, you, but yeah, you know, I'm like, yeah, and they're like, yo, we want to rock with you. And he's like, nah, man, leave me alone. <laughs> like, you're not like, bro, nah, like, like no one is going anywhere, bro. And I love that parents like, nah, G, we're, we're, we're rocking together. You know, it's, it's like, and then he hurts Matt's feelings. Matt did not deserve that. Matt did not deserve that at all, yo. Matt is such a good friend. And after all the stuff they've been through, he didn't deserve it. You know what I mean? And then we have, we have Loyal come through and he's like, Go or stay, Loyal said. Together or apart, it doesn't matter. You are all three Taviran. Even I can see it, and I don't have that talent. Just by what happens around you. And mm. Moraine Sadai says it too. Matt threw up his hands. No more, Loyal. I don't want to hear about that any more. Loyal shook his head. Whether you hear it or not, it is still true. The Wheel of Time weaves the pattern of the age, using the lives of men for thread. And you three are Taviran, mm. center points of the weaving. No more, Loyal. For a time, the wheel it will bend the pattern around you three, whatever you do. And whatever you do is more likely to be chosen by the wheel than by you. <laughs> Taviran pull history along behind them and shape the pattern just by being. But the wheel weaves Taviran on a tighter line than other men. Wherever you go and whatever you do, until the wheel chooses otherwise, you will... No more! Matt shouted. <laughs> Bro, they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear any of it, yo. They were not there for it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I love that, though. Uh, yeah, he's just not having it, you know? I, I love that he's not having it, though. Uh... Oh, interesting. Never knew. But yeah, he's not having it. And then Loya, excuse me, Rand continues to try and keep push everyone away. And then he's super mean to Loyal. And then we get Loyal's eyes, as big as cups, looked surprised and hurt at first. But slowly they tightened into what almost might be anger. Like, bro, how dare you know how much of a dick you have to be to make one of the nicest people ever be almost kind of angry like you ass face and he was so mean that shock even filled the gambler's eyes it was like what you did was wrong my boy <laughs> everybody was judging rand and, and as they should as they should 
And then Egwene pulls up and she starts set tripping with Rand. And I love that. I love I love how Egwene uh, just be going off on Rand because they're basically like together, you know, but they're not. But they are. And then she's like, yo, why are you being such an ass to everybody? You be nice. Like, like you be like you chill out. And then he literally threatens her like, yo, I'll. I'll get you. And she's like, you can't even channel on on Will, but I can't. So you better calm down. And she's like, I might just set your pants on fire. <laughs> and then she really does it. <laughs> she, well, not does it, but, you know, she starts, like, flickering the fires. And he basically, like, gets up and, like, manhandles, manhandles her, swings her around, and pins her up against the wall. And then she's like, men, you can't win, so you just start trying to use force. And he's like, hold on. Who tripped who? Who set on who? And you th you threatened. You tried to. No, no, no. You don't do this to me. And then they have that that regular argument, you know. You do this to me all the time. Try to turn the things that I'm saying on me and then turn the whole argument into something else. I was like, yo, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. They're, they're literally arguing like a married couple. Uh, and I love to see that. And then, you know, they talk a little bit more. They, they express how what, what's been going on. And then we find out that not just Nynaeve, not just Egwene, but also Nynaeve have been going to uh, meet with Padden Fane and talk to him. Like, what is that about when he's a whole ass dark friend? That's just something that I don't understand. But she's like, yo, it's been lonely. And then that's when Rand realizes he's like, oh, because I've been avoiding you. And Perrin's been avoiding everybody. And Matt's spending all his time gambling. So, yeah, it makes sense that you have no one else to talk to but Pat and Fane. So he's like, I can't even be mad about the things that are going on because it's really on me. And then we meet, after a little while here, we meet Changu, who I am at least 37% sure is a dark friend, possibly 58. I'm about 37 to 58% sure that Changu is a dark friend. Man seems like a freaking weirdo off the rip. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Uh, uh, and, and then, you know, yeah, he's like, yo, your dark friend, friend and all this stuff. And, and he's like, yo, this guy's a douche. And I, I also thought he was a douche. Uh, and then he's just trying, they're trying to figure out where to go. Okay. Oh, and then Patton Fane and Rands, they start chit chatting a little bit. Let me see. Here we go. Fane stood at Egwene's approach, not shielding his eyes or even blinking at the light. He smiled at her, a smile that touched only his lips, then raised his eyes above her head. Looking straight at Rand. Hidden in the blackness behind the light, he pointed a long finger at him, 
I feel you there hiding, Randall Thor, he said, almost crooning. Now you can't hide, not from me and not from them. You thought it was over, did you not? But the battle's never done, Althor. They are coming for me, and they're coming for you, and the war goes on. Whether you live or die, it's never over for you. Never. Suddenly he began to chant. Soon comes the day all shall be free, even you and even me. Soon comes the day all shall die, surely you, but never I. Oh he let his arm fall, and his eyes rose to stare intently at an angle up into the darkness. A crooked grin twisting his mouth, he chuckled deep in his throat as if whatever he saw was amusing. Mordeth knows more than all of you. Mordeth knows. Oh Egwene backed away from the cell until she reached Rand, and only the edge of the light touched the bars of Fane's cell. Darkness hid the peddler, but they could still hear his chuckles. Even unable to see him, Rand was sure Fane was still peering off at nothing. With a shiver, he pried his fingers off his sword hilt. Light, he said hoarsely. This is what you call being like he used to be. Sometimes he's better and sometimes worse. Egwene's voice was unsteady. This is worse, much worse than usual. What is he seeing, I wonder? He's mad, staring at a stone ceiling in the dark. If the stone weren't there, he'd be looking straight at the women's apartments, where Moraine is, and the Amelin seat. He shivered again. He's mad. This was not a good idea, Rand. Looking over her shoulder at the no, cell, she drew him away from it and lowered her voice as if afraid Fane might overhear. Fane's chuckles followed them. Even if they don't look here, I cannot stay here with him like this, and I do not think you should either. There is something about him today that... She drew a shaky breath. There is one place even safer from search than here. I did not mention it before because it was easier to get you in here, but they will never look in the women's apartments. Never. The women's... Egwene... Fane may be mad, but you're madder. You can't hide from hornets in a hornet's nest. What better place? What is the one part of the keep no man will enter without a woman's invitation, not even Lord Agomar? What is the one place no one would ever think to look for a man? What is the one place in the keep sure to be full of Aes Sedai? It is crazy, Egwene. Poking at his bundles, she spoke as if it were all decided. You must wrap your sword and bow in your cloak, and then it will look as if you are carrying things for me. It should not be too hard to find you a jerkin and a shirt that isn't so pretty. You will have to stoop, though. I told you, I won't do it. Since you're acting stubborn as a mule, you should take right to playing my beast of burden, unless you would really rather stay down here with him. Fane's laughing whisper came through the black shadows. The battle's never done, Althor. Mordith knows. I'd have a better chance jumping off the wall, Rand muttered but he unslung his bundles and set about wrapping sword and bow and quiver, as she had suggested. In the darkness, Fane laughed. It's never over, Althor. Bruh, it's never over, Althor. We are, bruh, it's, it's, it's going in, man. Chapter, what was that? Chapter three was a solid chapter of just, once again, letting us know what's going on and giving us a good idea of you know what the world not the world but what this what the city is on high alert everyone is on high alert for what's going on right now even Padden Fane is on a high alert he's set tripping he knows something is afoot just like everybody else does and it, it's how pleasant uh I gotta cut out early tonight I'll catch the combo tomorrow make sure to make him make a prediction on who opens Fane's cell door <laughs> Yo, uh, good night, my boy. Yo, sorry, I was I was reading and stuff. I'm sorry I didn't get to say good night to you, yo. But sleep well and wake, my brother. I hope you have a good rest of your night. Good night, there. Good night, brother. You too. Uh, R RJ was definitely a shy guy. The way he talks about being scared of getting naked. Yeah, exactly. He's like, oh no, I'm a naked. Uh, the cloak was an obvious easy cut. It costs a lot of money without adding much. I think it kind of does add something. It adds the unity of them being warders a little bit, you know, and it adds a little bit of that mysticalness to them as well. But 
I guess it, I, I I agree. It's not a big it's not a big change, but it's like, hey, this is the like he said. You know, it's like nothing about these guys is the same except the cloak. You know, and I I think that would have been at least you know at least having them still wear a cloak of some kind, even if it was just to uh son of a bitch, even if it was just to uh, identify them as being warders or something. I think that would have been a dope thing. Because I'm trying to think if they have any ident identifiers as like, oh, we're warders. And I don't think they do. Tim will be doing his best. Who, who among us hasn't had a spider? Uh, I mean, who has, hasn't had a panic attack? Spidey senses? Maybe put that put a pin in that. Maybe put a pin in that for later. Ooh. I can't stand Rand trying to alienate his friends, especially Loyal. Yeah, Loyal is such a big friend, good guy, buddy like there's no reason for him to be treated like that rj using loyal to recap some exposition facts he did use it yeah that's true that and it's a good way to do that pat and fane came to eman's field for years and at the end of the last book he seemed a little repentant i guess he seemed a little repentant but not enough to be like Follow it, like going to see him when he's the whole reason why the entire city got attacked where all of our friends and family was like murdered and killed. Uh, Egwene admitting she had a bad idea is serious. No, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Who do you think is the bigger bad, Fane or Baal Zaman? Um, Baal Zaman, but I think Fane, I mean... All the worker bees are always bad guys as well. But, you know, you got to know who the big bad is. <sighs> Unless it's some wild, wild shit like Pat and Fane is secretly Balsamon just chilling. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah, and then we get to see that, you know, Moiraine is getting all fancy for an audience with the Amarillin seat. Um, and then... Uh, we get a we get a description of Moiraine, of her not being tall or anything like that. Um, It says, uh, and then it also says that Moiraine had a commanding grace. Uh, and then this was a manner ingrained growing up in the royal palace of Kyrian. It had been heightened, not submerged by still more years as an Aes Sedai. She knew she might need. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Am I, am I, did I, sp oh, I did just speed ahead. My bad. Whoops. That's my bad. I just kind of started going. Fane seems like he knows how to climb the corporate ladder. Yeah, that's facts. That's facts. My bad. I forgot to say it's time for. Yeah, my bad. Sorry about that. But yeah. Well, Rain's going to get an audience with the Amberlin seat. So she's getting all fancy. And we also get the mention of her being in the Royal Palace of Carrion. Uh, and, you know, and that's kind of the first time we get that mentioned. Uh. And then, and then, she, and then she's like, it cannot be allowed to go wrong. Like, uh, oh my bad. She's like, though, there must be trouble going on. Um, and I was like, yo, this is just so, I made a note that says, this is so different from the book LMFAO because I was like, I, I mean, from the show, I mean, this is so different from the show LMFAO and I'm like, bruh, what's going on? You know, like the Amarillin seat has traveled to them which is something that happened later on in the other season and all that type of stuff. You know, it's kind of just wild to see uh, how different things are going on right here. Uh, but then we also get the first peek at or the first mention of Leanne or one of the first mentions of Leandrin, the evil woman. Uh, and they mention her as not only young seeming, but young and pretty with a doll's face and a small petulant mouth had her hand raised to pound again. Uh, and, you know, and I just was like, okay, our first little mention of, of what Le of Leandrin's evil self and what she looks like. Uh, we also get to see Anaya here. 
Uh oh, and then I was like, why did why did Robert Jordan do her like this? Anaya's blunt face broke into a smile as soon as my Moiraine opened the door. That smile gave her the only beauty she would ever have, but it was enough. Bruh. Ha, 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 ha. I was like, no shot. What the hell? This is crazy. Why did he just do her like that? Oh, uh, man, it was crazy. And then this is a, a, something that I was a little interested in. It was like. They were like, yo, you have this chamber warded and we can't enter. Why do you ward against your sisters? I don't know if I knew that that was possible. I don't know if I knew that wards in that manner were possible to exist. You know, like, I, I don't know if I knew about that. But that's fire. I love that. Like, that's freaking amazing. And she comes up with an ama what yet another good lie that's not really a lie. <gasps> Excuse me, because I said I cannot lie. No, and she's like, oh, it's not for you, sisters. It's for the other serving women. Ooh. Uh, liveried women curtsied deeply as they passed, many more deeply than they would have if Lord Faldara himself walked through. And I, and I love that piece right there because it just shows how much these women look to other women as, like, the royalty and as the true rulers and leaders of things. And not just the other women. Everyone does. But the women look at the other women, at, well, the Aes Sedai in particular, with so much more respect and uh, admiration. And it's kind of dope to see that on such a big level. Uh, and then we find out that there's been three more false dragons, yo, which is insane. False dragons just straight ravaging the land. And they talk about how the last fat false dragon all but tore Gilladan apart before his army, ragtag rabble or not, was defeated. And then Loghain is in Tarvalon by now, gentle and safe, but, Gil but Gilladan's losses were much worse. The two before Loghain could not travel, uh... And they got it going, and he got it going, even though they they got it going, even though they couldn't travel. And villages burned, and men dead in battle. So it's like, yo, it's about to go down. And then Moiraine says, three at the same time cannot be be ignored. Has any sister been able to do a foretelling of what's going on? You know, kind of look into the future and see what's happening. And it's like, bro, no. <laughs> uh, they reached oh, oh and then we see a lady Amalisa pulling up and she's like yo what's up with it honor to Tarvalon honor to Aes Sedai uh, and she drops into a curse, and this is where we get a little bit more lore. And she's like, "You honor us, sister." And then she's like, "Yo, what? They called me sister, you know?" So I love that. And she's like, "You honor me too greatly, I said I." And I love, I just love that little bit right there. Yet again, showing how much the women look up to the I said I as being like, like role models and wanting their acceptance and and you know all of that type of stuff. Such an amazing point. And then, well, here we go yet again, going far away from how the show is. We get mention of Elaine and how power she, how powerful she is, right? They're like, Elaine was born with the spark in her. It was not a matter of choosing. 
Uh, but she must still keep the full extent of the girl's potential secret. Uh, would the people of Andor knowingly accept Elaine on the Lion Throne after more gaze if they knew that she was not just a, a queen trained in Tarvalon, but a full-blown Aes Sedai? In all of recorded history, there had only been a handful of queens with the right to be called Aes Sedai, and the few who let it be known all lived to regret it. She felt a touch of sadness, but too much was afoot to spare aid or even worry. For one land and one throne. Like, bro, I had no idea that it was so deep. Again, I don't know if that was not mentioned in the show or it was just touched on. But, yo, they make it so deep that it's like, yeah, like, wow. And then they even go to talk about, uh, maybe that's later on. And then Anaya just continues to drop just all of the knowledge. And she's like, you must know that the great horn of the great hunt of the horn has been called an Ilian. Uh, the first time in 400 years, the Ilianers say the last battle is coming. And they're like, you what? And then sisters from the island say that the Koromor, their, cho their, their chosen one is coming, but they won't say more. And then they also say there's no evidence that the Aiel will cross the spine of the world again. Thank the light. So, like, we get a real quick uh, update of what's kind of going on in the rest of the world. And, and then we enter into the uh, Amerlin's chamber. And no one is talking to Moiraine at all about anything. <laughs> uh, and then we have this, all not altercation, but this discussion between the Amarillin seat and Moiraine. And then I think the Amarillin seat's like guard or whatever. And uh, it was just like so different from what was going on in the show. And she's like, I have seen the flooding we caused in villages along the river, and the light only knows what we have done to the weather. We will not have endeared ourselves by the damage we've done and the crops we may have ruined. So we're just seeing off rip that things are going awry. <laughs> things are going quick, quickly awry. Uh, and I was just like, oh, man. Like, what's going on here? Uh, and then um, we get more talk about Morgays. And Morgays is... And it's really interesting that Morgays is one of the only few rulers to openly admit that they have an Aes Sedai counselor. And then her daughter is going to be one of the only quote-unquote queens to also be an Aes Sedai. So they're definitely treading... With some murky waters, you know, amongst murky waters here. Uh, and they're like, yo, Elaine could well mo could well be the most powerful Aes Sedai in a thousand years. And it is the Red Aja who found her. They have gained much status in the hall from the girl. So they're talking straight politics. And I love politics, if you guys don't know. Like, po politics are my thing. So it was just really cool. And this is another thing that I feel like we missed out on uh, in the show is like seeing all of this interim turmoil uh, as far like between the different Ajas of the of the different Ajas of the White Tower. Like we didn't we didn't see it. I don't think to this extent to where they're like, yo, we got to do this because they're getting too many this. They got too many recruits. We got to recruit some people so they don't get too strong. Ah, da, 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 da. Like I just that was a solid little uh, addition. And then Moiraine is like, yo, you ain't even got to worry about the Reds because the old blood sings, mother. And it sings loudly in the two rivers. Egwene is uh, is as strong as Elaine. Uh, and then she and then she talks about uh, Nynaeve and saying that once she gains conscious control of what she knows without knowing. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. 
She says about Nynaeve that once she gains conscious control of what she now does without knowing, she will be as strong as any in Tarvalon, and then with training, she will shine like a bonfire beside the candles of Elaine and Egwene. Like, what a way to set the tone of the power scale of everybody, just quick and quick, fast, and in a hurry. Uh, they will easily counter whatever influence the Red Aja gains in the White Tower from finding Elaine. Like, boom! Like, let's get it, yo. Let's get it. And then Moiraine, like, uh, well, she, she gets a little surprised at the ambulance. He don't even care. And then we find out that Elida then came out and snitched, homie. Elida then came out and told on everybody. She was like, she sent the same message by six different pigeons to make sure I received it. She told the Hall of the Tower that you are meddling with a young man who is Taviran and dangerous. He was in Camelin, she said, but when she found the inn where he had been staying, she discovered you had spirited him away. <laughs> and that is crazy. And Elida actually spoke well of of uh the do of Master Gill, our boy, so she didn't do anything to him, but she said that our guy Rand is more dangerous than any man since Arthur Hawkwing. Like, bruh, we're getting such, we're getting so much built up. And then Moiraine is like, I doubt very much if any of them even dream of uniting the world as ruler. And no one has dreamed Arthur Hawkwing's dream since the War of a Hundred Years, which is a beautiful bit of lore to get there. Uh, and then we find out that the Reds and the Greens have been locked in. And they're now working together against everybody else. And she's like, we find out that the Greens and the Reds have proposed that Moiraine's care should be handled by Red Aja, who ain't nice. Like, bro. The Reds were never gentle. <laughs> and they're like, yo, if the Reds and the Greens are conspiring with each other, then we really must be in trouble. Because they hate each other. And then uh, something that's never happened in a while. There was open talk that the Amerlin seat should not leave the White Tower. No one had ever suggested otherwise, not in the darkest of days of the Trolloc Wars, not when Arthur Harqueen's uh, armies had pinned every surviving Aes Sedai inside Tarvalon. The Amerlin seat was the Amerlin seat, and every Aes Sedai was pledged to obey her, except for now. So there, it's going in. They, they are like discussing a big things right now in such a short amount of time. The news that Moiraine was alone with the Amerlin seat was no doubt spread through the Aes Sedai in Faldara like wildfire through a dry forest and the speculation would begin. So just them even having a conversation like this is dangerous. Um, uh, and then, you know, they kick out Leanne because Leanne was in there listening to everything first. Uh, and then, you know, she... Uh, what's her name? Su Suan hugs Moiraine. And I was like, yo, is this the, is this the lesbiana scene? But it wasn't. So are they not lesbianist in here? You know, like, do they not have a relationship in the book? Like, was that relationship just heavily implied in the book? And then the show was like, nah, bro, we all know this is what happened. So. We we not going in your window nothing. Here it is, flat out, black it out. Yeah, and then we start hearing about their plan and a little bit, but not too much. They're just like, yo, uh, we will be stilled if this ever happens. And I don't know if that was the first mention of of something about being stilled, but you know, there it is. 
Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's jump into chat for chapter four. Let me know how you guys are feeling. Uh, Leandrin, yeah, Leandrin with the chiseled jaw. She up in here now. We knew in the last book she had wards to keep Trollocs out, but hesitated to use them because they used so much power and would just tell Fades they were there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember about those wards. Yes, you're correct. You're correct. I, yeah, I just don't think I realized they could work in that way, you know, like for for anyone. I think I thought it was mainly for the Trollocs, but it makes sense that it would work for anyone. The land yearns for a dragon. Yeah, and it's spitting them out left and right. Like three dragons, three false dragons that fast is crazy. They're like, yo, no, we need, to, like, the ba balance needs to happen. Like, there, there's, there will be a reckoning. We get mention of Varen here, don't we? Oh, I think so. When they're talking like, oh, yeah, you would be better suited as a brown Aja like Varen or something. I think that's, I think that happens there. You're right. I, I think I completely overlooked that actually, Mario Sue. Good, good. Thank you for uh, pointing that out for real. But yeah, I, I enjoyed chapter four. It was solid. We got a lot of. We we were able to uh, explore a lot of different things. We were able to uh, experience different points of views uh as well finally finally got to see moiraine's pov see how she handles things see what she does get to see her trying to save face at all times and not show reactions not overreact to things or not be surprised by certain things because she knows it'll give certain people satisfaction or certain movements will answer other questions that she doesn't want answered so it's just dope to kind of see all of those notions take place in this chapter and to be able to see what she's up to but still be completely confused as to what the hell she's up to i i love that i love it so uh this was a solid chapter for me and i hope it was a solid chapter for you too All right, ladies and gents, we're about to get into the final chapter. But before we do, make sure you go and grab you some popcorn. Hi, my name is Dominique Pruitt, and I started Don's Bond Gourmet Popcorn LLC in the summer of 2021 to introduce delicious and unique flavored popcorn not found anywhere else in the world. Why you ask? Because I make it in my home with love, just for you. We offer over 10 flavors and are continuously creating new flavors that can be customized to any color or taste for your next event, party, or fundraiser. So go find yourself to our website and find a bombastic flavor of popcorn at donsbombgourmetpopcorn.com or you can also follow us on Instagram or Facebook at donsbombgourmetpopcorn. That's right. Make sure you get you some of that Dom's Bomb Gourmet Popcorn, where the popcorn is always bomb and gourmet. And, of course, it's made by Dom. All right. They do have a relationship in the books, but more so when they were younger. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I like that. I like the way. But I see why they didn't add it. They didn't add the whole whispers in the White Tower vibe. You know, they didn't add any of that type of storyline in the show, which is super interesting. <laughs> but... That was chapter four. So now let's move on to. Chapter five. The shadow in Shinar. Shadow in Shinar. Yo, this is where we start talking about stilled. Uh, it starts off with giving us a, a finally getting a solid explanation to the whole stilled and gentle, uh, the stilled and gentiling thing. Stilled. The word seemed to quiver in the air, almost visible. When it was done to a man who could channel the power, who must be stopped before madness drove him to the destruction of all around him, it was called gentling. But for Aes Sedai, it was stilling. Stilled. 
no longer able to channel the flow of the One Power. Able to sense Sidar, the female half of the true source, but no longer having the ability to touch it. Remembering what was gone forever. So seldom had it been done that every novice was required to learn the name of each Aes Sedai since the breaking of the world who had been stilled, and her crime, but none could think of it without a shudder. Women bore being stilled no better than men did being gentled. Like, <laughs> like, bruh. Oh man, we're just cooking. Like, we're cooking. I love it. I love it. Um, and then I think I just love this question asked by Suwan. Uh, is it betrayal to betray a traitor? Like, oh man. Oh, bro, we're cooking. Like, that's such a solid thing to say. But I also understand that, you know, the Amberlin seat is terrified. Like, Swan is terrified of what's occurring right now. Like, how could she not be? Especially when something so, so massive uh, is the like is the risk that they're they're up against she's must. like the prophecies must be fulfilled we were taught that they will be and must be and yet that fulfillment is treason to everything else we were taught Man. some would say to everything we stand for Rubbing her arms, the Amelin seat walked over to peer through the narrow arrow slit at the garden below. She touched the curtains. Here, in the women's apartments, they hang draperies to soften the rooms. And they plant beautiful gardens. But there is no part of this place not purpose-made for battle, death and killing. She continued in the same pensive tone. Here we go. Only twice since the breaking of the world. Has the Amelin seat been stripped of stolen staff? Tetsuan, who betrayed Menetherin for jealousy of Elisande's powers, and Bonwin, who tried to use Arta Hawkwing for a puppet to control the world, and so nearly destroyed Tarvalon. <laughs> the Amelin continued her study of the garden. Both of the red, and both replaced by Amelin from the blue. The reason there has not been an Amelin chosen from the red since Bonwin and the reason the Red Aja will take any pretext to pull down an amelin from the blue, all wrapped neatly together. Man. I have no wish Whoa. to be the third to lose the stolen staff, Moraine. For you, of course, it would mean being stilled and put outside the shining walls. Hmm. Elida, for one, would never let me off so easily. Moraine watched her friend's back intently. Light, what has come over her? She has never been like this before. Where is her strength, her fire? But it will not come to that, Suan. The other woman went on as if she had not spoken. For me, it would be different. Even stilled, an Amelin who has been pulled down cannot be allowed to wander about loose. She might be seen as a martyr, become a rallying point for opposition. Tetsuan and Bonwin were kept in the White Tower as servants, scullery maids, who could be pointed to as cautions as to what can happen to the mightiest. No one can rally around a woman who must scrub floors and pots all day. Pity her, yes, but not rally to her. Eyes blazing, Moraine leaned her fists on the table. Look at me, Suan. Look at me. Are you saying that you want to give up after all these years? After all we have done? Give up and let the world go? And all for fear of a switching for not getting the pots clean enough? Yo, like she was going in. They were going in on each other. I love it. Half the sisters with me think you should be handed over to the Reds, and if that happens, you will wish you were a novice again, with nothing worse to look forward to than a switching. Light! 
If any of them remember we were friends as novices, I'd be there beside you. Hmm. We had a plan. A plan, Moraine. Locate the boy and bring him to Tarvalon, where we could hide him, keep him safe, and guide him. Since you left the tower, I have only had two messages from you. Two. I feel as if I'm trying to sail the fingers of the dragon in the dark. One message to say you were entering the two rivers, going to this village, this Emmons field. Soon, I thought. He's found, and she'll have him in hand soon. Then, word from Camelin to say you were coming to Shinar, to Faldara, not Tarvalon. Faldara, with a blight almost close enough to touch. Faldara, where Trollocs raid and Murdral ride as near every day as makes no difference. Nearly twenty years of planning and searching, and you toss all our plans practically in the Dark One's face. Yo. Are you mad? Now that she had stirred life in the other woman, Moraine returned Yo, to outward calm I herself. Love it. Calm, but firm insistence too. The pattern pays no heed to human plans, Swan. With all our scheming, we forgot what we were dealing with. Tafirin. Elida is wrong. Arto Peandrag Tanriel was never this strongly, Taviran. The wheel will weave the pattern around this young man as it wills, whatever our plans. Like, bruh, whatever our plans, the wheel weaves as the wheel wills, baby. That's what's going on here. And I'm like, oh my god, let's cook. Like, we are cooking. And then she says, the world will burn, Swan, one way or another, whatever we do. Like, bruh, what? <laughs> oh, the horn of Valir made, made to call dead heroes back from the grave. And prophecy said it would only be found just in time for the last battle. To sound the horn himself and lead the host that answered its call north. Through the blight to level Shail Ghoul itself and put an end to the Dark One. Let whosoever sounds me think not of glory, but only of salvation. Yo. Like, man. And then we hear about the, Car the Carathian cycle. Uh, and, oh, and then here we go a little bit later on. Uh, even prophecy can fail if the one prophesied is slain or gentled, and then we face the Dark One naked to the storm. Neither of them is the one, Swan. The pattern does not demand a dragon, but the one true dragon. Until he proclaims himself, the pattern will continue to throw up false dragons, but after that, there will be no others. If Loghain or the other were the one, there would be no others oh. like beautiful we're we're in there and then we see the heartstone the quindiller <laughs> uh yeah The Amberlin hastily uh, assembled the pieces. What they formed was a disc the size of a man's hand, half blacker than pitch and half whiter than snow, the colors meeting along a sinuous line unfaded by age, the ancient symbol of Aes Sedai. Before the world was broken, when men and women wielded the power together, Half of it was now called the Flame of Tarvalon, the other half was scrawled on doors, the dragon's fanged, to accuse those within evil, only seven like it had been made. Every, everything ever made of Heartstone was recorded in the White Tower, and those seven were remembered above all. Suan Sanche stared at it as she would have at a viper, on her pillow the secret hidden from the world if the world ever thought of it was that no amaryllin seat had known where any of the seals were that they were supposed to be protecting since the trollic wars like what's going on like they are so the amaryllin seat is there to protect the seven seals and they don't even know where the seven seals are it's freaking crazy. 
And then as the Amberlin seat touches the fractured seal, she says, I saw the boy, you know, in the courtyard during the welcome. It is one of my talents, seeing Taviran. A rare talent these days, even more rare than Taviran themselves. And not certain, t yo. <laughs> a tall boy, a fairly handsome young man, not much different from any young man you might see in any town. He looks like a regular old Joe. Like, he, he just looks like a regular old Joe, but... Their talent these days, even more rare than Taviran, and certainly not of much use. A tall boy, a fairly handsome young man, not much different from any young man you might see in any town. She paused to draw breath. Moraine, he blazed like the sun. I've seldom been afraid in my life, but the sight of him made me afraid right down to my toes. I wanted to cower, to howl. I could barely speak. Argomar thought I was angry with him. I said so little. That young man, he's the one we have sought these twenty years. There was a hint of question in her voice. Moraine answered it. He is. <laughs> he is. He is. Rand Al Thor, baby. Like, like, yes, we're here, man. Randolph Thor. It doesn't sound like a name to inspire fear and set the world on fire. Like, yo, I love how they're just like, we're getting it. And then, and then she goes, uh, and then, uh, she's like, he must be handled gently or he will bolt in any direction, but the one we want. And Suan says, then we'll handle him like a newborn babe. Ah, ah. We'll wrap him in swaddling clothes and play with his toes if that's what you think we need. But what to immediate purpose? Yo, like. And then she tells them more about the about the plan of having the friends carry the horn of Valir to Ilian. And then we find out about Shadar Logoth and how bad it is. And then she says, if the boy if more death touched the boy, if that happened. The world would be doomed. And I am so confused as to how that is a thing and why that is that. Because I was not aware that that would be such a, a, a big deal. Um, and then she's like, but it, she's like, it didn't happen, Swan. But I, I'm like, did it happen? Um, and she says she does. She's done what she's can to, you know, to save Matt. But the link is still there and they need everybody to help him out. Uh, and then Rand says that he will give up the one power again. And Swan says, as he, well he might, easier to give up drinking water. Like that just showing you how important it is to them as being Aes Sedai and being wielders of the one power to actually be able to touch the true source and harness it. I, I just love it. Uh, and then... Moiraine says, uh, I will see to everything in Ilion, Suwan. The Ilioners would follow the dragon or Baal Zaman himself if he came bearing the horn of Valir. And so will the greater part of those gathered for the hunt. The true dragon reborn will not need to gather a following before nations move against him. He will begin with a nation around him and an army at his back. Like, ho, 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 ho. Like, whoa, Nelly. Yes. And then another comparison to a candle. He has no more control over his fate than a candle wick has over the flame. So Moiraine compared uh, Elaine uh, and Egwene to a candle flame and then compared uh, Nynaeve to a bonfire. And, are and she's now comparing... Uh, 
Rand to a candle that has no control over his flame as well. And I just, it's just mm, nice. And she's like, I'll tell you anything in the morning. And then we're introduced to Geoff from Bornhold. Uh, I don't know a lot about Geo from. I don't. I can't think about. I can't think of where we saw him in the show first. Oh, and then we find out that he left Valda in charge, but he was trying to find the daughter heir to Tarvalon, uh, and he <laughs> and he and they're like, "Yo, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he kidnapped the girl on her way to Tarvalon." Like, yo, what? And then the captain commander says, there are forces at work beyond what you know, Geofram, beyond what even you can know. Choose your men quickly and go. Ask no more and let the light ride with you. Like, bro, you got a job to handle. And then we find out that I think it's Valder has basically pacified an entire village. Like, Damn. Uh, and then uh, he says, it would be like the questioners, cold enough to kill an entire village for secrecy and stupid enough to throw the bodies into the river to float downstream and trumpet their dead and trumpet their deed from all Kruna to Tanchico. Like, yo, what? Crazy. And then he's like, bro, are you saying that I have brought an entire legion across most of Terrabon and secrecy to root a few dark friends out of some grubby villagers. It's like, bro, you here to do what you told, son. And and so it I guess there's different factions within the white cloak, so never mind about the question I was about to ask. And they just talk about how the like if Archer Hawkwing's uh, armies have truly returned, and then strangers and bra and and dark friends from wherever they came. That is all we know and all you need to know. Like, bro, don't don't worry about it. And then he says, "We're definitely stones on a board, but who's moving us?" And then we're with Leandrin again. <laughs> and then for so, and then this was something that I saw, and it was like the Dark One's power was rooted in death. He gained power from death, and at those times, she thought she could feel his power stirring. Something stirred in the half dark, at least something she almost thought she could catch if she turned quickly enough. Something she was sure she could see if she looked hard enough. <laughs> like man cook ing oh and then we also see that you know these ain't there's these ancient customs with Aes Sedai that basically if you are a higher rank than someone that mother that daughter that that vibe is you know it's different at that point you know you you look at the person above you in a completely different matter, uh, manner, and because and we see that because Leandrin is talking to Amalisa, I believe, and she's like, "Do you walk in the light, my daughter?" And then it says, uh, uh, "The other woman was older by some years, but the ancient forms would be observed." So it's just showing that there is definitely a rank being pulled there. And then Leandrin does some gangster, some gangster shit here. She's like, in that moment of doubt and confusion, Leandrin strikes. She did not move, but she lashed out with the one power, grasping Amalisa and jerk, and giving her a jerk. Pause. Uh, and then, as if she had been pricked with a needle, uh, and Leandrin's petulant mouth perked in a smile. It had been forbidden for her to do so. 
Uh, but to Leandrin, that only meant one more thing that she had to conceal from those who were jealous of her. So we're we're finding out quickly that Leandrin is a evil person. <laughs> it, you know, I think in the show they they try a little bit harder to conceal that she is not nice. But in the book, it's like nah 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 nah. Here you go. Here's everything you need to know. It's right here. Like she is not nice. Uh, and we find out a, a little bit more about that ability that Leandrin can't force anyone to do what she wants, but, you know, she could try to do so. Uh, she could at least open their minds to her arguments and make them believe what she wants them to believe. So a little bit of a Jedi mind trick kind of going on there. And she's like, obey, daughter, obey, <laughs> which is crazy and basically like mind controls her. Um, and then she just starts questioning her about Moiraine and, uh, Pat and Fane and the dark friend and all these other things. Uh, uh, let me see. Yeah. And she's just trying to figure out what's going on. And she's like, yo, let me know like what's happening. And then she's like, yo, the Black Aja is real, child, real, and here within Faldara's walls. Talking about herself, obviously. Almost as horrible to learn the Dark One himself walked Faldara Keep. Uh, and think only, and then she's like, um, think only of what I have commanded you. Only that, the fate of the world rides on this, my daughter. All else you must forget and she's like yes leandra and i said i so she basically brainwashes her just straight up no way to sugarcoat it just straight brainwash and then we get um i mean it's basically a post credit scene right like Yeah. And then we get our post credit scene. Pitch blackness covered the dungeons whatever the hour, unless someone brought in a lantern. But Pud Unfain sat on the edge of his cot, staring into the dark with a smile on his face. He could hear the other two prisoners grumbling in their sleep, muttering in nightmares. Pud Unfain was waiting for something. Something he had been awaiting for a long time. For too long, but not much longer. The door to the outer guardroom opened, spilling in a flood of light, darkly outlining a figure in the doorway. Fane stood. You! Not who I expected. He stretched with a casualness he did not feel. Blood raced through his veins. He thought he could leap over the keep if he tried. Surprises for everyone, eh? Well, come on. The night's getting old, and I want some sleep sometime. As a lamp came into the cell chamber, Fane raised his head, grinning at something unseen yet felt beyond the dungeon's stone ceiling. It isn't over yet, he whispered. The battle's never over. Bruh. <laughs> like, what a way to end this section, right? Like... What a way to end the section with the damn literal post credit scene. Like, the, it's a post credit scene of Ben Fane getting released. Like, how awesome is that to end the section? I love it, yo. 
This chapter was amazing. It was filled with everything that I needed to be. This section was filled with everything that I needed it to be as far as it goes with this story. Uh, I love this story so much. I love this book so much, and I cannot wait to continue going down the field of all the things that are going on. So uh, I, I know you guys probably want to know who I think it is, and we'll talk about that and all the good stuff. But let's jump into chat and see what's happening. Uh one thing I was going to point out, don't confuse Anaya the Blue with Alana the Green, who you know from the show. Okay, maybe that's what was going on in my head, because I was definitely trying to place her somewhere. And I was like, is she this person or is she that person? Um, I was also kind of confusing her with uh, the the OG lady, like the OG lady that ends up telling Moiraine she needs to stay. That's who I thought she was, you know? Like, she's like, yo, we need you, all this stuff. And then she's the one that ends up getting captured later on and all that other things. That's who I thought it was. Uh, Moiraine is the only person that gets to use Swan's first name. Oh. The prophecies say, neither shall anything stand nor abide. Or, nor abide. That seems pretty clear. Facts. Kuindiar. Oh, it's not Kuindiar. Oh, oh, okay. Kuindiar. That makes sense. Uh, Matt's dagger story goes on a good bit longer than it does in the show. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Good to know. Geo from is the grandpa white cloak who captured Perrin and Egwene, but was still kind of honorable. Oh, 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 okay. I got you. I got you. Vald is an asshole. Facts. And Leandrin is a baddie. Yeah, I did, I, yeah, she's bad. She's a bad person. <laughs> Compulsion, even this weak form of it, is highly illegal. Hmm. So it seems like they. Okay, okay, I got, I got you, I got you. Uh, I got you, I got you. Some shit is about to go down. Yo, I can already tell. I don't know what it's, it is that's about to go down, but it's definitely about to go down. Uh, and I am super... I am so surprised at where we are within this, sh within this book right now. Like, I am not going to lie. I am so surprised. So with all that coming to a, a, a close, let's talk about the book to show comparisons now. Now we are going to talk about book to show comparisons. And the first thing that I have is the show Rand seems a little darker than book Rand. In my opinion, the show Rand seems way more uh, Anakin like than book Rand does. I said very early on with it, like with watching the show, I was like, oh my gosh, is my boy really going to be evil and like go dark side? Like, is he Rand? Like, is Rand Anakin? Like, I, I even called them Randakin because I was like, bruh is going to go evil and I can feel it. I don't have that same feeling for, for Rand here. I feel like Rand here is a lot more na uh, naive, a little bit gullible almost. I, I feel like he needs a hug. I, I feel like he needs some love. Uh, I, I feel like he needs, you know, a little, a little bit of, uh, you know, he needs a little bit of, a little bit of TLC or something. But Randikin, he was like, he just seemed like he was ready to to make shit happen. But my boy in the, you know, you know, Rand in the book, he doesn't seem like a Randikin. He just kind of seems like Rand. So maybe, you know, uh, maybe that is getting, a, maybe that storyline for him is sped up in the show and we're just not at that point in the books yet but i do feel like like book rand is a little bit more uh i, I not hopeless but you know like I don't know, a little bit more moldable by the dark side. But we haven't seen that part happen yet either. So, but I'm just saying, like, even in season one, I just felt like, yo, Randikin is, you know, Randikin might be a thing. So that's the first thing that I have as far as the book to show uh, comparisons and stuff. Uh, and also the land stuff. You know, land seems like he's a little more rebellious, if that's the word that you can use. He may be doing things like that Moiraine is asking him to, but it more seems so that he is being kind of his own person and it's weird to him. You know, it seems like even that's weird to him. You see him even hesitate when he talks or make these slight pauses because to him, he doesn't, it seems like he's like, man, why am I doing this? But 
you know, he keeps doing it each time, though, regardless. So that's definitely something that stood out to me uh, for Lan. Uh, I kind of talked about Lan's cloak as well. That's another thing that I have written down. I definitely wish we got to see the cloak thing happen or some other clothing cloth piece thing that also tied them together as being, uh, you know, warders. Because I feel like that cloak tying them together as warders is a really dope thing. Uh, I just wish we would have got to see something like that, bring that, bring them all together as well. Um, but I can, again, I can understand why it didn't happen, but I just wish it did. Uh, oh, I also wrote here, Aes Sedai, old but young. I, I really love that aspect, and I don't think... I don't think the show spends enough time, like, explaining that. You know, like, how, like how old is she? Or, you know, I don't think we get that too much from the show. At least from my point of view right now. I feel like in the books, they take a lot more time whenever we're introduced to an Aes Sedai. Or whenever someone else is watching an Aes Sedai. They're like, hey. You know, like... She obviously is young, but is she old? But is she young? But is she old? Like, it happens almost every time in the book, and I love that. And it's kind of... The, you get that feeling from the show when you're watching it. You're like, is she supposed to be old? Or is she supposed... Like, how old is she in the show? You know? Like, that's the vibe you get, but at the same time, I don't feel like it's something that is, like, said too much or, or focused on. Um... Oh, another thing I wrote down here is the Whispers Throughout the White Tower. That's super interesting that the Whispers Throughout the White Tower are so heavily, uh, like, all that stuff is just mattering a lot, you know, as far as, like, who are you talking to about this? Or why are you talking to that person about this? And and the uh, the uh, almost rebelling against the Amarillin seat, you know, them not wanting to do that. The Amarillin seat leaving, you know, in the first place. Like, that is also crazy to see how she's leaving instead of staying at the place and they're going to Tarvalon. Like, they're not in Tarvalon. But when this happened in the show, they were in Tarvalon in the White Tower, you know, like having this conversation. <laughs> So it's just crazy to kind of see how different everything is and how different things are happening. And this is the part that we see happen later on in the show at the end of season two towards the end. You know what I mean? When we see Lanfear and come through and like take Moiraine and Rand and uh, uh, other bruh through the portal when uh, Suwan is trying to stop them. Like, that kind of seems like the moment that we're about to get right now in the books, but it's happening in a completely different way. So it seems like we just kind of switched the order around of, you know, how things are playing out as far as the show goes versus how the book goes. So uh, I, I appreciate that a lot. And then one of the last things I have here also is Matt's daggers switch with Leandrin. So Leandrin has the longer storyline within the show, but in the book, uh, Matt's dagger has the longer storyline. So I, I think that that was also a dope uh, change to give us to be able to focus on another character like Leandrin earlier on in season one and, you know, you know, and then get us here now. I think it's a good, I think it's, I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, I like it. I like it. I like it. I, I like having Matt's daggers like matter more in the book right now. And, you know, him gripping the dagger and everyone like looking at him with the dagger. And, and I love that stuff. It, it works really well. It re works really well. So those are the, uh, those are the, uh, six or my top five, I guess you can say things, uh, you know, that I saw my top five book to comparison thing, book to show comparisons that stood out to me. Uh, let me know what you guys see different in the book to show comparisons, uh, for this section of reading. What about the differences with Fane? There's definitely something weird going on with Book Fane. Book Fane definitely is like a Trojan horse type of vibe. It feels like he's almost possessed, maybe, and he is constantly fighting the possession or the compulsion, uh, and maybe something is activating that whenever it's close or whenever it's around him, possibly, because... Book Fane definitely seems like he's not just straight up evil. 
Shofain was straight up evil. Like, I have no doubt in my mind that bro was never going to come back to the light side. Like, bro does not give any uh, instances of thinking that he is, you know, the same guy that the uh, the Eamon's Field 5 knew. Like, they are not, he's not the same at all, you know? Uh, but in the, in the book, they're like, oh, let's go talk to him. We miss him. da 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 but in the book, in the show, it's like, bruh, we got to get away from him. Like, whenever we see him, we know he evil. Like, we hear the whistle. Like, I, I, I not, like, he's so menacing in the show, in my opinion. He's so menacing. Having that whistle just follow them around and you hear it and you're like, wait a minute. What? Or you just hear it in the background of the show somewhere and you're like, wait, is Patton Fane there? And then you can just see him sitting there in the background just watching them, you know? And he's just off. He's, he's staring at them menacingly. Like, that is all just... They're so different. There's so many... Wait. From book to show, they distinguish as obvious different characters. But they share so many similarities at the same time. But I think, like, I think Bro is just really not sure. Like, he's either playing a double cross vibe in the book or we just haven't got to who he is in the show yet and seen him do the whistle thing and walk around you know um and i'm interested in knowing if uh robert jordan seeds pat and fane in the book in that way to where it's like you know like was that Pat and Fane that they just saw? You know what I mean? But you don't really know. Like, who, what other characters are getting, like, explained just quickly or briefly that are, like, actually somebody? And we just don't know it. But, yeah, the difference with Fane from book to show are immense and vast. And I love them both. I'm not going to lie to you. I like, I like all of the changes that there are. Uh, the, the, the changes, some of the changes work, some of them don't, but nonetheless, it still makes for a really strong story and a really good thing. It just plays out really well. So, uh, I definitely appreciated this segment of reading. I hope all of you guys appreciated this segment of reading. Um, it, it was so much fun. I definitely lacked a little bit. I didn't realize it was going to be so quote unquote long. That's what she said. Uh, but, you know, I'll be more properly equipped next week. Uh, also, what she said uh, to, you know, tackle this reading and get it going. So next week we will be doing episode two and that will be going over chapters six through nine. So next week we will be going over chapters six through nine in episode two of our From Watcher to Readers series. I am so hype to get into that yo you want to place a bet on when we'll see land fear uh i feel like we'll see land fear around chapter like 25 maybe 27 like that's kind of where i feel like we'll see we will see land fear for the first time because I just feel like all the stuff that's about to happen, it's going to be a lot of stuff going on. You know what I mean? So like, oh, but that would kind of be more towards the end. Yeah. I, I think like, yeah, I think, I think chapter like 25, 27 is where we'll see land fear. So I, I'm pumped for that. I'm pumped to see land fear too and see how she is in the book versus the show. I know she's different. The action picks up immediately next section. I can tell. I mean, literally, you left us off with a cliffhanger. Not even a cliffhanger, with the post credit scene. Like, bro, it's about to get lit in the next chapter. I'm so ready. I am so ready to get to it within the next chapter. I'm not going to lie. Like, I am extra pumped. Yeah, I am super pumped. I can't wait to get into it. I'm super pumped for the action, man. I want to know how, like, especially because this is book two. So we haven't got to see like an action sequence yet. So I want to know how the action holds up in this one. 
This is a good cutoff. Exactly. Exactly. What such a good cutoff. Um, I, w and if we would have been earlier, if I would have been earlier today, we wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been up this late. So I really want to try to get to that five o'clock uh, time next week, um, or six o'clock, you know, or maybe just keep experimenting through five, six and seven to see what time is the best time when we get the most of you guys coming through as well. Uh, I I'm really pumped to see what's going on. So RJ is good about knowing when it's time for an action sequence, man. Yes, he does it. Yes, I. Oh my god, oh my god, that is such a good point. The pacing is magnificent. The pacing is magnificent. Almost every time in the story in book one, almost every time when I was like, man, something I need to like. Now I don't want to say like I was getting bored, but when it was like, whenever I was like, okay. Like, we've been finding out about a lot of stuff. It's like I turned the page, and then a fade is just at coming out of nowhere. And now, bruh's just, like, fighting a fade in the middle of the town. And it's like, oh, shit. Like, what the hell just happened, you know? Like, like bruh, yes. Yeah. So, I am so pumped to see how this, this story tackles the action and all of that stuff. Because I can tell tremendously that there has been a... There's there's already a slight upgrade in like the writing and everything from book one to book two. So I want to see how that also translates with like the action sequences and, and 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 you know even seeing how the our characters now that they are more uh, acclimated to being in these high intense situations, how do they also handle being in there and and what do they do? You know I want to see all of that. I want to see how all of it plays out, and I am just ecstatic. To be able to partake in all of this with you guys it's been so fun to be able to have you guys here nerding out with me uh again i am really gonna try to get to that five o'clock time because i want you guys to be able to be here and not have to leave too early even though i know everyone has to leave and do their thing i still want you guys to be able to he be here and enjoy it live because i know uh, I know how fun it is to be able to talk about this stuff live. It's I know it can also be fun for you guys to check it out on the replay, which I appreciate from all of you tremendously. But I also want you guys to be able to be here and partake in book club when we do it live because it just makes it so much fun for, I think, all of us to be able to nerd out and talk about all these dope things that are going on. So uh, the, you guys have your homework for next week. Chapters 6 through 9 is what we'll be reading. Uh, for episode two from for our from watcher to reader season two uh, series, I am super pumped to get into it, you guys. You guys have been making this awesome. You guys are awesome, and I truly hope all of you have a fantastic rest of your day. If you haven't already, make sure you follow us on social media at Marvel Bros to save the date with all things Marvel and everything pop culture uh, because, you know, that's where all of that stuff is. If you want to check out what I'm talking about or what I'm doing, you can check me out on social media at Sensei Finito to save the date with all my thoughts, theories, and opinions on whatever particular thing I may be partaking in at that particular time. And, of course, you can check out that weekly podcast wherever you check out the weekly podcast at. You guys have been amazing. Uh... And I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your day, night, evening, week, whatever time it is, wherever you at. Sleep well and wake to my family that's still here with us. And as I always say, stay awesome, stay nerdy, and don't forget to stay marvelous. Excelsior. If you guys would like to support Marlboros, all you got to do is visit our website at www.marlboros.com and buy some merch. Represent super fan. Or you can join our Patreon to get early access to content, patron-only scoops, giveaways, private Q&As, and those sacred watch parties. We appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, On today's pop culture news update. On today's pop culture news update. On today's pop culture news update.